Mavis. Morning. Uh, afternoon, love. Afternoon is gone 12. So you won't be wanting this paper, will you? I mean, no-one's gonna buy a morning paper in the afternoon. Well, if you want that paper, it'll cost you eight pence. You can't be serious. It's waste paper now. I mean, who's gonna want that? Well, quite obviously you do. Hey? Oh, yeah. But I'm different from the common air, don't I? I'm a gentleman of leisure. I've only just got out of my pit, so it's still morning to me. Eight pence. Do you know something, Mavis? You are becoming a very hard and impervious woman. <laughs> I only wish that were true. And when you've got a minute, I'll have a cup of tea and a piece of toast. I'm heavy on the butter. How do you fella lay about? Oh, don't you start, not unless you fancy a good thump. <laughs> Sit down, shut up and read your paper. Oh, oh, no. Could I have a box of matches, please? Um, you haven't seen anything of Mrs Sharples, have you? No, I've not seen her for a few days, actually. Perhaps she's gone away. No, she's not away. I saw her at the hospital this morning. Oh, is there something wrong with her? Oh, that's what I'm wondering. She was sitting waiting in outpatients. I just caught a glimpse of her as I was passing, but I didn't get the chance to speak to her. And then when I came back, well, she'd gone. She must have been waiting for one of the clinics. I hope it's nothing serious. Well, that's why I was asking if you'd seen her, in case you knew anything. No, I'm sorry. Anyway, I don't think Mrs Sharples would confide in me. She doesn't confide in anybody. That's what worries me. She's too much pride. She's frightened people will think she's asking them for something. I know. She's very independent. I'll see what I can find out, but it's very difficult. You've got to be so careful what you say to her. Bye. Bye bye. Any danger to getting that cup of tea and a piece you of toast? Just have to wait. I don't know what women are coming to these days. They don't want to give a bloke hard work and good service. I mean, look at you lot. Look, don't you push your luck, yes, because I am liable to give you a right clock winder. I'm only pulling your leg, love. I mean, I don't like work myself, so I can sympathise with you, you know. You work so hard for layabouts like you, ain't it? You're drawing all sorts, you. Social security, do. You're drawing no. Oh, it's not good, that. Sounds like dodgy leadership to me. <laughs> Look, will you keep out of it? It's got nothing to do with you. And I wish you'd stop your moaning and talking about quitting. We've got Mike Baldwin on his knees, practically. He'd be coming begging us to go back in a bit. You must have said that about 50 times. <laughs> Don't worry, darling, I'm paying top rates. You won't get better money for a house by a shift in this town. Yeah. Good girl, good girl. Oh, incidentally, look, love, uh, I'm, I'm laying on transport, so we'll be able to pick you up and take you home in time for supper. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Don't. She said yes. You're damn right, she said yes. Right, that makes four of them, right? Four girls who can work as good as Ivy's lot. Don't get any of that guff about the unions either, because none of them are in the union. Yeah, in other words, black legs. I don't care what you call them, mate. They're ready to work. That's as far as I'm concerned, all I'm interested in. I still say it's a dicey thing to do. Yeah, maybe, but I've got to do something, Stevie boy. If I wait for Ivy's lot to see sense, those machines out there will be obsolete. And incidentally, you'll be out of a job. Oh, yeah, OK. I just don't think it's the best thing to do, that's all. Got any better ideas? Well, you could try talking to Ivy again, you know, Giorgio rather than War War, like Churchill said. Forget it. She wants to talk to me, she knows where to find me, right? I said, any better ideas? No. Right, we'll do it my way, then. Now, look, I want three more women to make up that uh, line at night so I can get a full line out. Look, here's a list of possibilities. Now, they're not on the phone. Go and see them so you can drum up out that one, all right? Right. Well, incidentally, there is one other thing. I don't want Ivy's little mob getting wind of this deal. Oh, obviously. No, well, they got wind of that subcontracting deal I had with Cottons, didn't they? I don't want them to get wind of this. Well, they didn't get wind of it from me. All right, well, call it careless talk if you like. I'm not saying you meant it to leak out. Well, I'm telling you, it wasn't me that leaked it. Well, it certainly wasn't me, but they found out somehow, didn't they? So let's be doubly careful this time, all right? That's all I want. Well, I hope you eat enough, Mrs. Sharples. You've got to have proper nourishment, you know. Look, Emily Bishop, I am not simple and I'm not going senile. I get plenty to eat, so don't worry. Oh, I didn't mean to offend you, Mrs. Sharples. I, I just know it's easy to neglect yourself when you're on your own. I've found that out these last months. 
Yeah, she will have done. Didn't mean to bite you, that's love. I, uh, I thought I saw you at the hospital this morning. As I was passing out patients. Yes, you did. I saw you, too. I'm going to keep you at it at that place, for the look of it. Well, uh, there's not a lot of time to stop and have a word with people. Uh, were you waiting to see somebody? One of the doctors? Oh, they've changed the system down there. They get rid of it much quicker now. All the time we could sit all day in that outpatients department. Yes, yes, they do seem to have cut down on the waiting. Of course, some of the doctors have a longer queue than others. <laughs> You'll never be a match for Hilda Ogden, will you? You need a brass face that has a straight-pointed question if you want to be good as a nosy neighbour. I hope I'm not being nosy, Mrs Sharples. Yes, I hope so too. Well, I, I will admit, I did wonder what was wrong when I saw you in outpatients. I hope it's nothing serious. Well, how serious can anything be at my time of life? Can't stop me working because I've got no work. Tell you the truth, it's a bit of back trouble. Oh, well, that can be very painful, I know, and difficult to put right. Did they say what Look, exactly... Look, I don't want to sit here and talk about my ailments. When I have a visitor, I like to be entertained and not cross-examined. So stop mithering me. Sit down and tell me something interesting. But quiet this dinner, Mrs. Walker. I blame those women across the street. Pickets. Parading up and down with their banners and their placards. Customers don't want that sort of thing forced down the throat. When you've been a licensee as long as I have, you'll get an instinct about these sort of things. I expect you do. A licensee has many, many headaches, Fred. The responsibility can be a heavy burden. Ah, it's not all roses all the way, Mrs. Walker. Do I gather that uh, your ambitions in that direction, you sort of put them back on the shelf. Well, you could say that, I suppose. I realise, of course, that you were very friendly with that young woman at the Flying Horse, but I got the impression from Elizabeth, she was very discreet, that perhaps you weren't quite as friendly now. Well, just friendly, that's about it, though. Mind you, I did get round to proposing something a bit more than friendship, but, uh, well, I decided against it, you know. I think you're very wise. You've got to be so careful. Mm -hmm. In any case, Fred, you're quite happy here at the Rovers, aren't you? Oh, certainly. Well, then... Probably all for the best. Quite frankly, though, Mrs Walker, I still would like a pub of my own, you know. I sort of went about it the wrong way. Anyway, when I meet the right lady, if and when that happens, I'll uh, I'll be thinking about it then, but not until. When you got a minute, Fred, please? Right, Squire. I'll put a large scotch in there. Oh, oh and uh, whatever he wants. Oh, half a lager, please. How'd you get on? It's not very well, I'm afraid. Well, how'd you get on with the list? Well, I got to eight of them, but... Well, there was only one of them wanted to know. One of them said yes, and her name was... 64 quid, Squire. Only one? Mary Crawshaw, yeah. Well, they didn't want to know about the evening shift. All right, well, just keep your voice down, will you? They've all got families, and they all work. It's the usual thing, isn't it? If you want a job doing, do it yourself, right? Give us a list, see how I get on. In the meantime, get those machines checked, will you? I want them in working order tonight, all of them. <laughs> Hello, love. Hiya. Hello, love. Uh, can I get you a drink? Oh, yes, please. Have a lager and lime. Thanks. Working through his dinner hour again. Oh. It's this flipping hotel job, honestly, and it's offering some hours. Yeah, but what let Len do any here, then? Good question, only I'm not going to ask it. No, seriously, if I ask any questions about the workings of Fairclough and Langton, I'm liable to get myself involved in who does what row. I know. How's the hotel job going, anyway? All right. They're in sight at the end and ahead of time as well. Yeah, well. Oh, lovely. Cheers, Len. How yeah. come your mate is slaving his guts out over the road and you're in here swilling beer during your dinner hour? I had to call in the yard for some stuff, didn't I? I only called in while I was passing. I this. haven't been mourning, Len, honest. I know you haven't. I think you and Rita deserve a medal for the way oh. you've had to put up with us in the past few weeks, you know. Anyway, I'd better get back to the chain gang, oh. didn't I? <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> hey, uh, I understand your uh, social life has gone for a bit of a burden oh. recently. Zero. Uh, oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I tell a lie. We had a fish and chips supper last Thursday night. <laughs> no, I don't mind, really. We're rare working so hard. It's just... Oh, I don't matter. Come on. Tell, tell, tell your Auntie Elsie. Well, as a matter of fact, it's our wedding anniversary today. Three years. Darn me. Congratulations. Ah, oh, been nicer if Ray had said something like that. Oh, he forgot all about it, did he? Honestly, he was out of bed this morning. Why isn't my breakfast on the table? Where's my clean underpants? Why is this fried egg hard? Where's my butties? ta -ra. <laughs> That's flaming fellas, love. Hi. They're all the same, including your... Hello. Oh, <laughs> Mr Tatlock, I'm glad I found you. I, uh, 
What did a word with you about Mrs. Sharples? Oh, huh? what about her? Well, this back trouble of hers. What back trouble? Well, surely you must know something about it. You see more of her than most of us. She must have said something. Oh, well, I she has. But she's all a snacked on about summer, so I don't bother to listen. Well, you should do. Everybody's not as well off as you are, Mr. Tatlock, and I think you should bear that in mind. Well off? Me? How do you make that out? You're not on your own like Mrs. Sharples is. You've got somebody in the house who cares whether you live or die. And when there's something wrong with Mrs. Sharples, and I'm sure there is, I think you should know about it. And if you don't know, at least you ought to care. Women. All right, keepers. I'll give you a thirst. Yeah, well, make the most of it, because I might have time to get you no tea. Hey? You'll have to see to yourself tonight. Oh, that yeah, killed her. Oh, now, Luke, Stan, I've got to be at this abattoir at 6.15, and I don't want to be late. Well, you can put something in the oven before you go, can't you? Oh, aye. And if you strap a brush to me backside, I can sweep the floor while I'm running about. I'm entitled to my tea on the table when I've done a hard day's work. Hard day's work? You don't know what that is. Any road, it will you what got me this evening cleaning job, so don't start moaning. Self, self, self with you, first, last and in the middle. No. Oh, Rick, who's this? Yeah, strike committee. Oh. We're not stopping, Elder, because me and I were due to take a turn on that picket line in five minutes. I just wondered, are you doing out this evening? Why? Who wants to know? Well, it's about time you took your turn up picket line. You know, this evening they do very nicely. Ah, well, she can't go, you see, because she's going so to... Don't stand. Why can't she? Where's she got to go? Uh, uh, no, no, well, it's just, uh, well, I said I'd go to, uh, to Bingo with uh, Mrs. Humphreys from Rosamond Street. To well, with Bingo, you can go to Bingo any time. We need you on that picket line. Ah, well, she can't go. Why not? Well, you've got to be on strike to be on the picket line, haven't you? I mean, she's been sacked, hasn't she? That's very true, Stan. Yeah. Give over, it's you this strike's all about. That's right. Look, we need you on that picket line, and then one of us can get off early. And we've got lives to live and all, you know. Oh, yeah, but, well, is there any other reason that you don't want to do it, I mean, apart from bingo? Oh, no, no, of course not. <laughs> right. Five o'clock, see you. She thinks she'd let Murray, that one. You nearly let it out, you pie can, about my new cleaning job. But it's now to do with Ivy. They're all out on strike to get me my job back. They'll go mad if they find out I've got another one. And you'll be late for it, too. Well, You're I'm... going that picket line. I know, but I can't back out, can I? Oh, what am I going to do, Chuck? Don't know. Oh, you. You're about as much use as a cast iron lettuce. Afternoon, ladies. Had enough yet? No, have you? <laughs> you must be joking. When you want to talk sense, you know where to find him. He's cracking. He'll be pleading wheels in a bit. Hope oh, these machines are all in working order. For what it's worth, yeah. What it's worth, Stevie, boys. We're back in business. I've got two more machinists starting tonight. Well, where'd you find them? Back of our old PAYE card index. Phyllis Jameson and Joyce Banks. Aren't they the two you fired a year ago? Yeah, well, I just done fired them. Right, let's get cracking now. I want you to hire a minibus because we're bringing all seven of them back here at six o'clock tonight. And what about the picket? Well, what about it? Well, they're not going to like it, are they? I mean, it'll mean trouble. Ah, by six o'clock, they'll either be in the pub or at home cooking their old man's tea. Anyway, if they're not, I don't give a monkeys. I don't like it, Mike. Well, I don't like it, Sonny Jim, but I've got to do something, haven't I? Otherwise, this place goes bankrupt. We're bringing in a new workforce tonight. This place is going to start humming again. Good evening, dear. How nice to see you. Are you going to share a sherry with me? Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Walker. I haven't really time. I am. Um, I must see Mr. Yates. Hello, love. How do you fancy the Queen of Sheba in the 8:30? <laughs> um. Have a word with you in confidence. Sure. What can I do for you? 
Well, it's Mrs. Sharples. I'm worried about her. There's something wrong. I've tried to find out what it is exactly. What sort of something wrong? She's attending hospital for treatment of some sort. I saw her there, but she won't tell me any details. Oh, I don't like the sound of that. She says it's back trouble, and that's all she'll say to me at any rate. Well, it covers a lot of possibilities, doesn't it, back trouble? Oh, that's exactly what I thought. Now, you know how Mrs. Sharples is. She hates to ask for help or be beholden to anybody. She can be an awkward old girl. But I'm dead fond of it. I know you are. That's why I'm consulting you. Oh. Oh, well, carry on. It's a novelty for me being consulted. I might get to like it. Well, as I say, I, I know you get on well with Mrs. Sharp. But, mm, she's clearly fond of you. Surprising, isn't it? Oh, no, no, not at all. No, it's I all right. I'm only joking. <laughs> Could I ask you to try and find out what is wrong exactly, and more to the point, does she need help of some sort? Well, she never asked for help, will she? Never in a million years. No, but all the same, we can give it if we know what she needs. Leave it to your cousin, Eddie. I'll invite myself round there for tea with her. If I can't crack it, it's uncrackable. Queen of Sheba in the 8.30. If you're having any difficulties with that one, any unpleasantness at all, just let me know. Oh, no, Mrs Walker. He's doing me a favour. Really? That's what he said to me when he sold me a carpet. I do hope you know what you're doing. Yeah, she's a little lot, she is, really. Oh, yeah, lucky Deidre. Hey, it's not all beer and skittles, you know. She can be a right little demon when she wants. She has me running after her all day and half the night as well. well I know, they do need a lot of attention. Oh, you don't know the half of it. Honestly, what with all the cooking and the cleaning and the looking after and the worrying, mm. starting with whether or not she's all right or whether something's going to happen to her. Well, I still think you're very lucky. Yeah, I suppose I am, really. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Oh, go, Malbert Tatt, like I didn't know you still had that turn of speed. I don't know what you're on about. Oh, yes, you do. I'm coming one way down the street, he's coming the other. He's ambling along about two miles an hour, and then suddenly he sees me, and it's Wham Bam and Roger Bannister down the back street. Well, he was trying to shove him, weren't you? Well, if I was, it hadn't done me any good, has it? Any road, I've got here first. Have you, have you got all you want? Oh, yes, be my guest, Mr. Tatt. Right. Tarp. What do you call them? Well, it looks like three or four sweets. Mint Imperials. Oh, mint Imperials, then all stuck together in a sticky lump. Yes, well, I bought them here and I was about two days ago. Now, have a look at them. They're no good to me. Oh, look, can I just put in a minute? All I want is a back to five, that's all. All you want to do is take your turn. What are you going to do about it? Well, what do you expect me to do about it? Sweets will go sticky if you carry them about in a bag in your pocket and it gets hot. They haven't been in my pocket. They've only been on mantelpiece. Well, heat from the fire, then. Look, fire hasn't been lit. Hey, I want my money back. Oh, really, Mr. Tattler? There's only about four left. I don't think you've got any grounds for complaint. If I don't get my money back, I'm going down to the health department first thing in the morning and I'm going to make a protest. Oh, for God's sake, give him his money back as we'll be here till Christmas. Keep out of this, you. Oh. What are you going to do about it? Look, you can have your money back, Mr. Tattler, but to tell you this, if this were my shop, I'd have you barred from it. I would, really. Yes, well, you can't be barred from toffee shops. Only pubs. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, he calls that consumer protection. It's a consumer protection racket, if you ask me. I'll tell you, fellas are all the same, like I told you in the pub at this, this dinner time. They're all they're either all ego, like him, or dead casual, like you are Ray, you know, forgetting your anniversary and oh, all Oh, as a matter of fact, Elsie, he didn't forget after all. Knock on the door, a big bunch of red roses he sent me. Oh, roses, eh? You must have a guilty conscience. Oh, I don't think so, Elsie. I think you've just been a bit unlucky with your fellas. Ta-ra. I'll say this for you, Dutch. Yes, you do a lovely cheese on toast. Oh, I ought to have had plenty of practice, I thought. Just melts in your mouth. Beautiful. Cheddar, wasn't it? No, Red Leicester. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, it was lovely. You know, uh, people are talking about you. Who is? Well, people around here. I don't they want something to occupy their minds. What are they saying about me? Oh, no, give them credit. They're worried about you. They thought you might be a bit poorly, you know. I might act as like poorly. I'm very well, considering. But you did go to the hospital. He even missing out round here, do they? I'll bet that them lib bishops been putting it about that I'm in a bad way. No, she hasn't. She just thinks a lot about you, same as what I do. Well, I just don't want fussing over it. It's only a bit of back trouble. It's some nout. Yeah, but you went to the hospital. Yes, well, it was painful. And what did they say about it? Well, they put a lot of fancy names to it, which all were about the fact that they couldn't do much for me. It was the same when Dr Kelly came to see me. But he did say that my bed wasn't being very helpful. I've seen that bed and he's dead right. It's just about knackered. It's a good bed, is that? It's craftsman made. I dare say, Duchess. But the springs have had it. I mean, it's sagging down to the floor. How long have you had it? Well, 
before the war, 1938, I thought. Well, they are. You see, they don't last forever, you know. Yes, but they made things better in them days. They may well have done, but you've got to have a new one. The doctor's talking sense. You've got to get rid of the old and have a new bed. Well, I'm not paying the daft prices they're asking for beds these days. 30, 40 pounds is a waste of money. It's not a waste of money. You spend a lot of time in bed. Yeah, it's not as much as some folks, you included. All the same, you've got to have a new bed. I am not wasting good money on a new bed, and that is final. So you can stop mithering me. Unless you want to outstay your welcome. Oh, look, you might want to hang about here all night, but I've got things to do. So, Jeff, well, we're just showing ourselves up stood here at this time. Oh, blow it, I'm off it. Hey! I'd you play hell, you know! Hilda! Hilda! Come on, then, What's girls. going on? Come on, girls. Hey, there's a strike going on here, you know. You're not allowed in. Hey, I know you. No, push off me, will you? Now, off it. Come on. Hey, you didn't see there was a strike on. So what? I know oh. you and all you used to work it. Well, we're on strike and you're not allowed in there. Now, will you off it? Come on, I'm not paying you to stand around. Scab! Get in. That's what you are. Scab! Nothing but scab! scab. Come on, Muriel. You 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 scab! You shut up, you! Well, she'll be sorry. Who oh, are then, these women is gone? Well, are you two of them? There was Joyce Benton and that Phyllis Jameson. Well, he fired them last year. Did he bring them in this minibus? Yeah. Well, you're not taking them back in it. You let them tie us down. Right. Oh, well, do that. I'll show you. Oh. Hey, yes. what about them? Well, they've got to come out sometime, haven't they? Yeah. Oi! Leave that crowd alone! Oh, yeah. oh, Clear up! Oh, You're wasting your own time as well as mine. Here, watch it. I'll have your first salt, you do that. Drive it away and bring it back later. I don't think so, Mr. Baldwin. Well, you're not scared of this lot, are you? You daft old women. Good God, look at that. I can't believe it's happening in this street. Whatever it's happening, it's always in somebody's street. They're turning this into a battleground. you think you know, and then suddenly they start behaving like, well, animals, I suppose. Painting the workers black is per usual, Annie. Well, it's hardly what you call civilised behaviour, is it, Mr. Faithful? It was Baldwin when he locked them out. Right. It's the difference between winning wars and losing wars. It's called strategy. Strategy. 
paying folk for doing that. Well, look, you know they're not working. I know they're not working. But Ivy's locked down, doesn't it? Any chance of it breaking up yet, Mrs. Walker? No danger. Mr. Bolton just seems to be letting it go on. Well, why not? Why should he worry? He's got his workers in there. That lot on there can go out all night for all he gets. Oh, he can. no, they can't. Because I've had more than enough, thank you. And if nobody else is afraid to do anything, I certainly am. Well, what can you do, Annie? What I should have done when the whole thing started. Give me the police. Yeah, I've been thinking. Why do you reckon he wants us to stop on? I don't know, do I? Well, I think I do. Now, what do you reckon Ivy Tilsey and her mates will think we're up to in here? Working. Working. Right. Yeah, but we're not. Oh, but they don't know that, do they? So what do we do? Well, there's only one thing to do. Get out. Yeah, but what? Yeah, yeah. 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 What about us money? Well, I'd rather hang on to my scalp tar very much. Yes. You're right. Okay. Agree? Okay. Agree with that, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What is it? We're off. You are. We're not we're stopping. Not we're not longer. Look, there's more money you want. We're just going to get out of it. In one piece. Well, I can't keep you if you don't want to stop. Yeah. 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 How are things out there, kid? It's worse if anything. Oh, yeah. Look, why don't you hang on for another half an hour? Now. Yeah, we're waiting. All right, all right. Calm down a minute. Come here. Oh, we can't face that lot out there on our own. What are we going to do? You better get the police. We're not police? We're not yeah, you are. Yeah, but what's up to them? The police don't call. No, but they can do it. Yes, yeah. Looks like somebody beat us to it. What's all this in here? Got scab labour in there. Yeah, yeah. Bus loads of them. Yeah. Yeah. Doing it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, one at a time. Look, we're only letting them know how we feel. We oh, demonstrate. Oh, it's not what folk round here reckon. Oh, oh, no. No. And who exactly is him in there? Oh, really? Is that a bus does with black legs? They're doing our job. Is it locked? Yes, sir. Excuse me, ladies. Baldwin. Uh, no, Steve, Steve Fisher. Uh, Mr. Baldwin's inside. He's asked me to let you in. You keep an eye on things here. Sorry. And keep it down, ladies. What's happening, Len? The sergeant's just gone in. Gone in to see Baldwin, I expect. And not before time. No, thanks very much. Mr. Baldwin. Yeah. Oh, Come in the I office, will you? Right. Now I think you better put us in the picture, don't you? Why didn't you let us know there was going to be trouble? Well, I didn't know they were going to behave like werewolves, did I? Oh, come on. You drive a bus load of strikers into your factory and you didn't expect there to be any trouble. Well, I thought there'd be a bit of reaction, but, well, nothing like that. Well, all happened so quick. One minute there was nobody there, next minute they were all round the gate shouting, yelling and throwing cans. Well, you should have thought of that, shouldn't you? Yeah, all right, all right, perhaps I should have phoned you, but I didn't. What worries me now is how am I going to get them out? Well, how did you get them here? Minibus. Is that it outside? Yeah, but it's no good. They've left the tyres down and I'm not going out to see to it because they'll flay me. All alive. right, just calm down, will you? Now, look, if I get another minibus round here now, can you get them out? Well, we'll try our best. Heaven knows how it would have ended if I hadn't called the police. Oh, well, it isn't over yet, Mrs. Walker. No, some of them haven't taken too kindly to it by the sound of them over there. Like a red rag to a bully's a copper's uniform to that lot. They reckon they're just poking in their noses to other people's business. I remember the time when a police officer's uniform used to command respect. What the world's coming to, I just don't know. I'll bet the coppers aren't falling over backwards to get their heads bashed in or get a few dustbin lids chucked at them. They'll be pig sick of it, I suppose. They're called in to sort out everybody else's business, but can they go on strike themselves? Can they, hackers like? What's going on out there? I thought you'd been barred from here. Yeah, I thought he'd been barred from everywhere. <laughs> Not nice, Elsie. Mrs W said it's all right as long as I'm a good lad. Correct. And I also said 
that if there is any further trouble, that is the end as far as this house is concerned. And I'm very flattered, Mrs W. I knew I sucked a fair bit, but I didn't realise your livelihood depended on it. And don't call me Mrs W. Right, Tar love. Tar again, you're a gent. Fred, if anything at all happens over there, you will tell me at once. Well. Oh, right away, Mrs Walker. What's it all in aid of, then? Baldwin's taken on some black leg labour. Why didn't he get in touch with uh, Uncle Eddie? I could have had a coachload of lads around there in half an hour. What for? To add a bit of weight to the cause, love. I mean, these are old campaigners. They can do two or three disputes in a day. If they're pushed. Mind you, I blame the government myself. If you want to watch it, they might stop keeping you. Why are you being nasty to me? Because they find it so very easy. Anyway, it stands to reason. If there wasn't so much unemployment, these lads I'm talking about wouldn't have the time on their hands to go round all these no, strikes. No, if there weren't so many strikes, there wouldn't be so much unemployment, would there? Which your mates are hoping to bring about some shame. Hey. You were. Yeah, well, uh, didn't come here to talk about strikes. But have a word in your shell, I love. Me? Yeah. I found out what's wrong with Mrs Sharples. Oh. She's got this bad back and it's getting worse because her bed's knackered. Why didn't she say something? Well, she didn't want anyone to know. Any of they got it out of it. The doctor reckons she needs a new bed. She says she can't afford it. So that's that, unless you can come up with some bright idea. I could have a word with the social security people. It is an exceptional circumstance, I suppose. Do you reckon they'd come up with something? It's worth a try. to talk to you. Yay! Ten o'clock in morning suit. We'll be there. Do you know, I reckon we've got Mr. Flaming Baldwin exactly where we want him. Yeah. Over yeah. a flipping barrel. Yeah. He shot his box. <laughs> From their point of view, I've got those girls in tonight, and I can get them in any night I want. Add infinitum with police protection. But they didn't do anything, did they? Yeah, but they don't know that, do they? Oof, they've just seen them go out, haven't they? We let them go as a concession to get the talks going. But we didn't. Well, look at it from their point of view. I am. And, and I, I still don't believe it. You don't have to, mate, as long as they do. No. Nope. It's us that's one. I haven't tasted liver like this for years. Oh, you'll not get it no fresher than that. You haven't liked it, have you? I buy hackers like. Perks of the job, is that? Oh, well, I mean, you don't work in the amateur, do you? You're the officers. Well, same difference when it comes to things like this. Do you make the most of it? I've got a couple of pork chops for you, see, you know. Best day's work I did when I got you that job. Yeah, well, you might have got it for me, but I'm the one what's going to have to do the work, and don't you forget it. And all that lot running around last night because you does your job. <laughs> and you're the only one that's working. I'll bet you had a drink on it and all. Yeah, but, well, I had one or two, you know. Mm. Oh, it's a smashing feeling, though, isn't it? What is? Well, us Ogden's coming out on top for once in us lives. Ah. Makes a change, too, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you want that liver? Oh, well, I. Imagine. Hey, so well, it's all then. Right, packing a bit more now. Handling all that work you got made up last night, Mr Bowling. Look, when I invited Ivy in for this little chat, I didn't right. expect the Luton girls' choir. Well, we're not going to be took in by them tactics. What tactics? Splitting us up. United we are. Solid. 
And Ivy's not going to do any deals unless she comes back to us. You're dead right, I'm not. Oh, come on, let's leave him to it. Let him get it sorted out. Yeah, but if he... Hang on, Ida, I'll handle this. Look, as soon as I've got up to report, I'll be down. Well, don't you be took in by him. I wasn't born yesterday, you know. Right then, can we go in the office, see? Hang on. I thought this was supposed to be a two-hander. Yeah, that's right. Well, what about him? He's part of the management, isn't he? And them girls were part at work for, so I had three goals, and they come back. Steve, I'll be in your office if you need me. Excuse me. Happy now? No, but I'm ready to start. Why people can't live peacefully amongst themselves without all this bickering all the time, I don't know. The papers are full of it every day. It's a fact of life, I'm afraid, Mrs Sharples. They don't know when they're well off. That's the top and bottom of it. If they'd seen two world wars like I have, they'd be glad of a bit of peace and quiet. Perhaps that's it. Most of them don't know what real trouble and tragedy is. All the more reason why they should be thanking the good Lord and making the most of what they got. And that's a tidy bit for the best part of them these days. I'll go and get the kettle on. I'll do it. You stay there. Rest your back. There's nothing wrong with me back. It's no good trying to fool me, Mrs Sharples. I do know. Well, I'd known that big fat lump of lard couldn't keep his mouth shut. Oh, don't blame Eddie. He was only doing what he thought was best. He just happened to mention your back trouble and that a new bed might help. It happened. It would be out of the question, isn't it? Not necessarily. You see, I think Social Security might be able to help. But before I approached them, I wanted to have a word with you. Yes, and a jolly good job you did. Because if you think I'm going capping down to that lot, you've got another thing coming. But you're entitled to it, Mrs Sharples. Look. I haven't got much, but what I've got, I've worked for and I've paid for. I have never taken a penny in charity since the day I was born. It isn't charity. Are you going to put that kettle on, aren't you? I really do think you should give it some thought. One tea bag should be enough if you fill the pot half full. And I like my milk in last. What happened last night is no to what will happen if they show their noses round here again. Got them in last night. I can get them in any night I want. Oh, how do you reckon that? With the help of the police. Oh, 24-hour protection, is it now? If it came to that. Look, Ivy, I'm not trying to threaten you. If I have to get along without you, I can, but I don't want that. I want you back at work. Well, that's something we both agreed on, any road. So what's stopping you? Two conditions. I'm listening. Hilda Ogden gets a job back. And? And we get full pay while we've been off. All right. Hilda can have her job back. And his pay? No way. It was your decision. You knew what you stood to lose when you walked out. Right. That's your best offer. Only offer. That's where I put up girls. Oh, uh, what do you think the reaction would be? Can't speak for them, but if you're asking me personally, I reckon if you want them machines working today, you better send for them blacklegs again. And coppers. Well, I think it's a great idea. He says she knows not about it. Not a thing. But if Mrs. Sharpers won't accept help from the Social Security, I can't see her accepting it from you. Me, boss. I've got a feeling that if we present Mrs. Sharples with a fate accompli, she'll accept it. I thought it were a bet she were after. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, then. How much is everybody giving? Oh, it's entirely up to you. Well, what about 50p? Well, if you're sure you can afford Don't it. Don't talk me out of it now. Oh, thank, thank you, you very much. I'll just get my hand back. Bye. Um, if you can keep it quiet, so much the better. If she gets wind of it, I'm afraid we might just as well forget it. It's buttoned. Thanks. ta -ra. Bye. Oh, hey, I hope you're in luck, Emily. It's the last of the big spenders. Morning, Mr. Tanlock. Morning, Mr. Tanlock. Morning. Tanlock. Mm. Yeah. Are you sure? Oh, yes, you take it. I can't think of a better cause. Thank what you. cause is that? Mrs. Sharples' bed. A what? Mrs. Sharples has a bad back, and the doctor thinks a new bed might help, so I'm starting a little collection to help get her one. Collection? Yes, so if you'd like to make a donation, it doesn't matter how small. Oh, I could do it in your bed myself. A lot of other new things as well. So when you finish collecting for Ina Sharples, you know to collect for next. If that's how you feel. Ah, it is. Uh, give us a quarter of a bugs while well, I can still afford them. Mm, you've gone off mint imperials then. Oh, like. If you'll take Hilda back, I can't see what we're hanging on for. Because he won't agree to pay us for the time we've been off, will he? Not yet, anyway. 
do you mean not yet? Well, it's only a matter of time before we clock it. Oh, you want to get a record made of that? Hey, it was Hilda's job we were striking of her, weren't it? Of course it was. Well, if she goes back, why can't we? Yeah. Because that's only half of us demands, mate. It's daft to call it off now. It's daft to carry on. Listen, longer we stay out, more, more we've got to lose. And I've lost enough already. Yes. We've got Hilda's job back, so I say let's call it a day. She's right, you know. I don't think we should let her I am right. Listen, I reckon we should have a vote. Yet. Jack it in and call it a day. Look that in consideration of the reinstatement of Mrs. Ogden, we agree to call off our industrial action and proceed with normal work. I've just said that. Have we got a proposal? Yeah, me. Second. I thought you were in favour of staying out. I am. All those in favour. Against. Right. Right. We go back. And Bayek, I hope you lot never have a real fight on your hands, because if you do, it's God help you. Well, I mean, we'll Well, they're coming back. Yeah, I thought they would do. But remember one thing, there aren't any winners in a situation like this, only losers. Loss of production, loss of orders, loss of wages, loss of profit, loss of goodwill. And where are we? Exactly where we were when it first started. I remember saying something like that soon after it all started. Yeah, well, it's all behind us now, isn't it? Thank God. Do you know, I've been thinking. Yeah? What about? Well, do you reckon it would have all happened if Elsie'd have been here? Oh, I don't know. Why do you? No, I don't. She knows the girls too well. It'd never have got that far. Yeah, maybe. And she hasn't got fixed up yet, you know. How is she? You mean they've gone back? Just took a vote on it. And I've got my old job back. You have. Baldwin climbed down. Ivy were all for stopping out for pay during its strike, but to tell you the truth, Hilda, most of us are fed up to back teeth with it. Anyway, I just thought I'd pop over and give you good news. Well, don't say tar, will you? It were you we were fighting for, you know. Oh, yeah, well, thanks very much for everything. Well, I thought you'd been over at Moon. Oh, well, she's got somewhere else to go, you see. <laughs> Better job. You are? Well, it, it's not all that better. Well, the abattoir, in the offices, you know. It's a good job, isn't it, Chuck? Well, it's, uh, it's not bad, yeah. <laughs> well, you're going to chuck it all in now, aren't you? Why? Well, you don't think we've been through all that for nothing, well, do you? Well, she owes you now. She didn't ask you to come out. Well, if she's not back over there by six o'clock tonight, I'll come and drag her out with her flaming curlers. And I won't be on my own. What are you going to do? No choice, have I? You're not frightened of them, are you? With me here to defend you. I still don't think I'll risk it, Stan. Are you sure this is not for the Eddie Yates Preservation Fund? Cross me heart, no tis I love. Would I pull a stroke like that? Yeah, you would. Oh, all right. Now, why I should donate for Bedfina Sharples, I don't know. Because she's too proud to ask for any help from anyone else, that's why. It's right. people like her who need help, you know, not these flipping sponges. Don't get me personal, I hope, Leonard. Thank you very much. And what may I ask you think you're doing? Uh, collecting, Mrs. Walker, uh, for a bed. Collecting? You win money? Well, I'm not collecting feathers to stuff in the mattress. <laughs> Sorry, Mrs. Walker. Don't you think you might have had the grace to ask my permission first? Well, I would have done if you'd have been here. You could have asked Fred. Yeah, well, we're not speaking at the moment, you see. I will not allow my customers to be approached by you for your financial schemes. Well, it's not for me, Mrs. Walker. It's for Mrs. Sharples. You see, she's got this bad back and she needs a new bed, only she can't afford it. And she won't ask for any help, so it's up to her mates to rally round, isn't it? <laughs> Mrs. Sharples? Oh, yeah. That's why I thought you wouldn't mind me having it in here. I thought if ever a woman understood the meaning of the word pride, it's you, Mrs. W. Eh, sorry, Mrs. Walker. I thought she will understand exactly how Mrs. Sharples feels. She is the one person I know who would go barefoot through the streets before she'd ask for a penny. Really? You thought that? That's true as I'm standing here. Is it all right to carry on, Mrs. Walker? No, just a minute. I'll get my handbag. Oh. Tell Mrs. W. I uh, me, Mrs. Walker. Oh, you I'll be with you in a minute. Hello, mate. Uh, half a lager, please, Fred, and uh, a scotch for mine. Oh, back to normal, are you? Yeah, well, they're working, you know, but it's not the same atmosphere, you know. I can imagine. There's no wonder, though, is there? Hey? Well, you know, them lot over there flogging their guts out, and you and your boss stuffing the profits already. You're trying to get them out again, or what? 
just the lad I'm looking for. And I thought my look had changed. I mean it, Elsie. The job's yours if you want it. You mean walk straight in and take up where I left off again, just like that? Well, more or less, but not quite. I mean, Ivor's been upgraded a bit, and Steve's taken a few jobs off my hands, but that's no problem. What do you say? I think I need time to think about it. What's there to think about? You either want the job or you don't. Well, thank you for asking, but I still need a couple of days. OK. Good move. Promise. Keeping him hanging on. It's one way of getting him to up the ante. I mean it. I need to think about it. Have you got anything else lined up? No. Well, what is there to think about? You know when I said I was taking the name of Elsa Tamper again. What's that got to do with you getting a job over there? Well, it wasn't just a <coughs> moment. It meant dropping Elsa out and all the things that go with it. So? Well, the job was better. Well, you won't do much better, you know. I know, but I still need to think about it. If you turn that down, where do you go from here? I don't know. But I'll tell you something. We're now a hell of a time finding out. You know something? Yeah. You're beginning to remind me of somebody I used to know. Oops. You got yourself something there? Well, I thought I'd better. Don't be like that. I can't be in two places at once. Anyway, you might as well have my mother to. Aye. Uh, oh, what can I do? Joe's left her. It's only natural she wants to come and live here with us. Yeah, but why else? So we're not the only ones in the family. Well, who else is there? Go on, tell me. Who else is there? Well, there's, there's your Terry for a start. <laughs> Sorry, in Belfast. And how are you supposed to court, for heaven's sake? You can't get married quarters for your mother, you know, and that's what she is, my mother. Yeah, I know, love. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, and take that look off your face. I don't want her any more than you do. No sooner got rid of Bet. Aye, out at flaming frying pan into the flaming fire. Oh, thanks very much. I don't talk about your mother like that. Lucky for you. I went for this specially and all. Oh, yes, I know, love. I love you and I think you're a little belter, but I don't think I could face fried lunch and meat at this time in the morning. What do you mean, this time of the morning? It's quarter to nine. That's what I mean. Give us a chance to wake up this time in the morning. You got dead lazy, you have, since you stopped working. Today's the day, you know. Oh. Today's the day you've got to decide whether you're taking that job at Spencer's or not. Don't worry. I sorted it all out at three o'clock this morning. I gave it a full minute's thought in between Gregory Peck and David Niven. And? I'm taking it. Taking what? That job at Spencer's. That's what we're talking about, isn't it? You'll be sorry. Oh, I just love you people. It's entirely up to you, Elsie. It's your decision. I'm taking it. You'll be sorry. First of all, better the devil you know. Mm, and I've known a few Look, of them, I'm though. being serious, so will you just listen? You can have your old job back any time you want. As far as Mike's concerned, all you've got to do is say the word. And return to paradise. All right. It's not the best job in the world, but at least it's handy. Think of what it cost you travelling backwards and forwards to Spencer's. Think of what time you'd have to get up in the morning. I just wish you'd shut your face for a few minutes. I've got everything worked out, cut and dried. I'm going to take Spencer's. They've got Lucky. They've got Elsie Howard. Tanner. Eh? I thought you were calling yourself Elsie Tanner. Well, yes, that's what I meant. And now, look, I don't know whether I'm coming or going. It's for your own good. If I didn't look after you, who would? Mm, well, get us another cup of tea, will you, love? I can't. I'm late for work. <laughs> Please. Hello, mate. Hello, Hello Ray. Hey, where are you going to get that bed from? Harper and Bagshot. The cup flies for face in the precinct. Oh, you want to be careful them, you know. It's a brand name bed, is that, mate? It's a belter. Wouldn't mind it myself. We got a headboard, no, didn't we? Certainly we did. Oh, by the way, we don't have to go to the front. Round the back, there's a loading bay about half past twelve they're waiting for us. Right, we better get some more drinking done then, haven't we? Same again for me. By the heck, I wish I could do that like he does, you know. Years of practice, that is. Well, you haven't been at it for so long and you don't do so bad, do you? Less of a lip, Langton. I stand me corner. Right, get him in, then. Hey. You had all right, sir. Can we have another round, better? Pints of bitter, is it? Yeah, no, I'll have a scotch with you, Eddie. Yeah, pigs might fly and hell. Hello. Hello. Oh, ready for the great adventure. As ready as we'll ever be, darling. <laughs> you do the driving, Bonnie. I'll handle the Tommy gun. And me and babyface Nelson will do a spot of breaking and entering, and Bob's your uncle. In and out before the scuffers have had their dinner. Um, we, we will have to break in, will we? I mean, it is absolutely necessary. Well, if you can suss another way of getting Mrs. Sharple's old bed out and a new one in without going through a door or a window, we're with you. Yes. And he old. That's the adventure part, isn't it? Yes, I, I suppose you're right. It's sort of Robin Hood. Do you know, I couldn't put that better myself. 
What are you having made, Marion? Um, could I have a pineapple juice, please? A double? No, just a small one, please. Pineapple juice, please, Betty. Oh, I'll well, do. Hello, Mr Tatlock. It's exciting, isn't it? I always said it would be. It was a great idea of yours, that, Marion. But it weren't our idea, it were mine. Who said it were hers? I only passed it on, Mr Tatlock. I don't lay claim to it. In fact, I'd rather not. And now I come to think of it, there's a somewhat insurmountable snag. Huh? How do we get Mrs Sharples out of the way while we effect the exchange? Just when I've thought about that and all, we decoy her away. Who does? Me. You need an old soldier for this game. Mind you, I might want a few bob for expenses. Happen I'll have to buy a drink or two. Oh, I'd have left you. You can tell he's an old soldier, can't you? Here. Here, yeah, there's 55p left out the fund. Take that. 55p? It's all you're getting, Albert, so shut your cake hole. Hey, he's a very indelicate man, Mr. Yates, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Good word is that, indelicate. While we're on the subject, dear, how are you getting on with your flat hunting? While we're on what subject? Pardon, dear. Well, you just said, while we're on the subject, how are you getting on with your flat hunting? Did I? Ha! <laughs> I don't know what I can have meant. No, neither do I. I'm getting on reasonably well. In fact, I've got a very likely prospect lined up. Good. Because you have been a gooseberry for rather a long time, haven't you, dear? Well, it's never easy at the best of times. I said it's never easy at the best of times. At the best of times. I'll have to go for a minute, love. There's somebody in shop. I'll not be a minute! Oh, you heard that, did you? Of course he's at work. Yes, he's just come off for his dinner. Well, I wish I could make you something, love, but you are going to have to pull yourself together, you know. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll put Alf on. He'll cheer you, love. Hello, love, how are we? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, things are bound to get better, aren't they, look? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'll have to go, love. Rena's just put me dinner on the table. Yes. Yes. We'll... We'll, we'll, we'll phone... Hmm? Yes, we'll, we will. We'll phone you... Yes, tell her, love. What did you lumber me like that for? Lumber you? You've had it for two minutes. I've had it for half an hour. And me auntie. And our Terry. We'd have her if we could. You know that. Well, you've not said she could come here, have you? Well, not in so many words, but it's going to happen. I can feel it in my bones, it's going to happen. She's wearing me down. Well, she's not wearing me down. Well, she's not your mother. And she's not your husband. Let's have a bit of consideration for me. And anyway, look at it this way. If she stays where she is, Joe might well go back to her. If she comes here, there's no chance of that. Oh, you cheeky devil. It was only yesterday you were saying she was better off without him. Yeah, well, that was yesterday, wasn't it? And what's happened since? I've got more flaming miserable, haven't I? <laughs> What do you want? Let me in and I'll tell you. What's up with you? Can't you talk on doorsteps? I were always taught it were rude to leave folk standing on doorstep. Mm, pity they didn't teach you not to interrupt folk when they're doing their ironing. Well, go on, get it off your chest. What are you after? Well, come round at Rovers and have a drink with me. What are you looking at me like that for? How long have we known one another? Best part of 70 years. Something like that. And that's the very first time you've ever said anything like that to me. How do you expect me to look? Well, there's got to be a first time. Why, heck, it's, it's a long time coming. What is it? It's a celebration or something. Don't tell me. You're celebrating the fact that it's the first time you've asked anybody to have a drink. That ranks with the Silver Jubilee. Well, are you coming with me or aren't you? Well, uh... hey, wait a minute. Who's paying? Me. Well, I'll left to regret it, I don't doubt. Is your Ken going away? Is that what it is? Do you want me to do a bit of cooking for you? No, no, not like that. I don't believe it. <laughs> ah, I was uh, just going to phone you in the doorway. Oh, yeah. 
I'm telling you, I just picked up the phone. Oh, yeah, I believe you. What's your answer then? Well, uh, I haven't made up my mind yet. And that's an answer, is it? You haven't made up your mind yet? Well, I knew you were hanging on. So you were going to phone me and tell me to hang on a bit longer? Well, yeah. I don't know. If I had three wishes, do you know what one of them would be? To have a woman's mind just for 24 hours, see if I could find out what made them tick. It'd only confuse you, love. You're not kidding. Yeah, well, you've obviously got something else lined up. Yeah, I don't mind telling you. Same sort of thing. Spencer's. Fair firm. Yeah, well, I've got to let them know one way or another today. And if I decide not to take it, I'll come back to you. Well, let's put it another way, eh? Make me feel a bit better. If you decide to come back to me, you won't be taking their offer up. It's the same thing, isn't it? Not quite. So you need a fella's mind for 24 hours. Oh. See ya. Mr. Baldwin doesn't see us. You're all right, love. He's gone in. And you know, it's a free country. We're perfectly entitled to be here, you know. Well, couldn't it be classed as loitering with intent? You're an upright citizen, Emily. Why should he come down on you? I wasn't thinking about myself. Oh. Yeah, well, you're all right, love. The British police force are a very fair bunch of lads. They don't operate in their dinner hour. So don't you worry. You just keep an eye out and lend. All clear. Great. Only one problem now, Raymond. How do we get in? Dark. Would you sweat? Perhaps we should wait till dark. And who's going to get Ina out again? Oh, yes. Oh, come on, what are you doing for Pete's sake? I'm trying to flame in dawn, aren't I? Oh, what do you spend so long in the nick? Yeah, well, I'm a window fella, really. Oh, dear. I, I think I might have left something on the gas. Windy! the back find the window. You keep your eyes skinned. Right. Hey, what's going on around here? I'm just wondering what I'm going to put up when I knock the viaduct down. Oh, I thought you were collected for so much. I am, actually, the price of a pint. Uh, you'll be lucky. We've run right out. Oh, I think so. <laughs> 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 Is that all? That's about. But she's in the back having a dinner with Mrs. Walker. Do you want her? No, oh, not really. I was just looking for somebody to talk to. I don't suppose that would exactly help. Oh, well, I do. You Betty, I don't know whether anybody would do. <laughs> you don't happen to know if um, if Bet's serious about this flat she's getting. Oh, well, I don't know, lovey. I heard her talking to Mrs. Walker a bit earlier on, but uh, I didn't catch what they were saying. Well, we were busy at the time. You know how it is. I think they were talking about that, but um, what they were actually saying, lovey, you know. Yeah, I don't know where I'm at at the moment, Betty. You'll, uh, you'll not let this go any further, will you, because I don't want it spreading about, but... Uh, well, my stepfather's left my mother. Oh, dear. Just walked right out on her. Left her. So many. Eh? <laughs> Not the day, dear. And guess who she wants to come and live with? For you? You guess. It's only natural, though, isn't it? I mean, you are her only daughter. It's where I'd want to live if I had a daughter. No, it is only natural. They give you the best years of their lives, don't they, mothers? Yeah, of course they do. <laughs> Just wish you were a bit more, yeah. you know. I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Bye, 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 bye. Never in all my born puff have I known it take anyone so long to sup a glass of beer. Well, I'm making it less. I heck you are. The brewers will never go fat on you. Right. I'm off. No, no. Don't go. Stay on. Stay on. Stay on. Oh, the needle's stuck. Well, you, you sit down and let's talk for a bit, eh? Just for a bit. What so? Was there something you've got to tell me? No, no, no. Right, 
Right, we're in. Let's be having it. No need to look so furtive, Raymond. They don't nick you for taking stuff in, you know. Come on. doing outside Enos with a van. Call the take that bed in. You know, the one they collected for. Hey, do you know you want to see him? They look like a couple of great train robbers. If I were a policeman, I'd run them in on side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pinnock. Could have done with Emily to do this lot. Leave it to your Uncle Eddie. I'm a dab hand at bed making. Hospital corners the lot. Huh. Prison hospital corners, you mean, don't you? Eh? Yeah, well, same difference. Yeah, we'll get a move on her. We'll be doing them for real. I thought you wanted to talk. I do. You said now for the past five minutes. I'm thinking. Oh, yeah. Well, I've got news for you. It is no pleasure for me to sit looking at you without a drink in me, and so you can buy me another stout. Nay, it's your turn. I paid for less. Yes, and you'll pay for it next. You rushed me out so quick this morning, I left my purse at home. There you are, my love. I've, uh, I've changed my mind. I've oh. got to get off home. Oh. And you won't want to drink by yourself. Oh, heck, you'll love them and leave them, Albert Tutlock. <laughs> hey, give us a pint, Betty, will you please, love? And a bottle for Mrs Sharples. Are you sure you mean it? Because the last one didn't. Of course I mean it, yes. Good health, Mrs Sharples. Thanks, lad, I need it. Oh. Is your back giving you trouble? Oh, it's giving me Oh, dear. I think I'll take it up. OK, then. Right. And make it a couple of pints, will you, Betty, please, okay, love? <laughs> Let you off for you, Cashy. Nah. Well, don't look so flipping cheerful about it. You know, I think I must have killed a policeman or something. Do you remember that Daisy and Joel that came to the wedding? You know, my mother-in-law and that big mouth husband of hers. And what about him? He's only gone and left her. Oh, well, congratulations to the pair of them. Not to me, though. It's odds on she's coming to live with us. Oh, no. It's been marvellous, isn't it? She'd be a damn sight worse than Bet. I'm not as pretty to look at either. I can see it now. She won't miss a meal. She won't her own way with the television. So Bet's going, is she? Well, she's supposed to have found somewhere. Well, you can't put them both up, can you? No, but. But if Bet hasn't actually gone. Hey, Elaine. You're a good one. Hey, I love it. Hi. Well, I'll pay for them, love. Oh, and Mrs. Sharples had the bottle. She's taking it home. I'll pay for that. Not here. Yeah. Have one yourself. Oh, darling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Forgotten. I've not forgotten anything. I had a urine meeting this afternoon, but I rang Charlie Fawcett and I don't need me, so blow him. Oh, good. You can help out here if you don't mind. Well, I've got get a bit of washing. Hey, listen. Uh, does your mother know about Bet leaving? No, she doesn't. You sure? I never mentioned Bet. Only I was thinking, we can't put them both up, can we? You mean... Well, uh... it's a matter of which one, really, isn't it? And there's another thing to look at and all. There's Bet's rent. I mean, eight quid a week's eight quid a week. It more than pays the rates. I suppose we wouldn't miss that. And she does help out in shop. I don't suppose your mother would do that. Oh, I wouldn't want her to. 
And you know, she doesn't want Tom's from a pound note. Well, I'm not sure that we're within our rights getting rid of Bet anyway. Oh, I think we are, you know, furnished accommodation. Yeah, but she's got her own bits and pieces up there, you know. I mean, we can't be positive. No, that's true, we can't. Does she know about your mother, Bet? I don't know, she can. I told Betty, but I told her to say nothing. Yeah, I said the same thing to Len. So that's it then. Oh, I feel awful. Look, love, your mother has a lovely little home it'd be a sin to get rid of. And anyway, it's an investment, and Bet's got nowhere, has she? We should have thought of this before. Yeah, we should have. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll go and find my mother, eh? I'll look after the show. Hey, hey Fred Travers. Uh, Bet, what? have you, uh, um, don't let on that I've told you, will you? But I don't want you getting at even more cross purposes with Alf and Reeney. What are you on about? Well, it's Reeney's mother. I mean, that fella is left her. And Reeney wants her to move in with them. Oh. So, love it, you'll just have to get your skates on, won't you? I mean, you've left them dangling for quite a long time now. Not to worry, Betty, love. I've got myself a place lined up. Oh, good. Is it nice, lovey? Gas Street. Oh, dear. <laughs> they don't grow on trees, you know. No. Is it your half day? Yeah. I'm dividing my time between sorting out Elsie's problems for her and keeping my eye on Mrs Sharples. Wow, what's wrong with Mrs Sharples? We smuggled that bed in. We don't know how she'll take it. Oh, yeah, I'd forgotten. You haven't seen her, have you? I'm just sleeping on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just Well, I'll have some tea through there. Well, Hello, Bet. You're just in time for a cup of tea. Look, Alf. I found a place in Gas Street. Hey, you've not definitely said you'll take it, though. Not exactly, no. No, well, you mustn't. I mean, we don't want you living in a dump like Gas Street, do we, love? No, we don't. You stop there as long as you like, love. I mean, there's no hurry. I know some of us have said some daft things in the past, but that's in the past. You stay until you find the right place for you, OK? Well, bless you both. I'll just nip upstairs and change my shoes, then I'll come down and have that cup of tea. And don't think I don't know. I've not been everything I should have been. Still, you could do a lot worse, couldn't you? Aye. Oh. Mike? Yeah. Leaving it a bit late, aren't you? Ah, yes. Well, I have decided to... No, just a minute. Let me get this right. I have decided to accept your offer. Wise girl. Just one thing. Spencer's have offered me five pounds a week more. Ah, well, you're just about break even on your old money then, won't you? Because you won't have all those fares to bring. You come back here for your dinner. See you tomorrow. You. Hey, has anybody seen Mrs. Sharples yet? No, I'm not seen <laughs> Mrs. Walker, can I make an announcement? Mrs. Sharples. Uh, could I have lunch, please? Well, I, I just want to say that uh, sometime during this afternoon, somebody broke into my flat, took away my old bed, and replaced it with a new one. Oh. <laughs> I've notified the police, and I would be very grateful if any of you who could would assist them with their inquiries. But why, Mrs. Sharples? Well, you see, my life savings were in that mattress, and they must have known oh, about that. Yeah. It, it's on the tip, Mrs. Sharples. I mean, uh, <coughs> it was us that took it, but we didn't know anything about the money. Look, I can get it back off the tip. <laughs> if I had any life savings, you think I'd have let you look back me and you? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. God bless you. Give him a drink. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a lot of scotch. Thank you for that. I'll have a lot of scotch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 you'll never guess. No, neither will you. I just had Conan on the phone. The developer's gone bust. The hotel contract's kaput. Finished. And we're finished with it. We've lost us 3,000 quid under his profit. You're joking. Do I look as if I'm joking? Conran knew somewhat about it. He must have done. A developer that size doesn't go bust without some word getting out. Oh, you and Len didn't know about it, did you? Only the subcontractors, aren't we? Conran was practically living in their pockets. No, he'd heard some, but I'll lay odds on that. Oh, why didn't he tip us off, then? Oh, he's too busy looking after number one, love. Oh, come on, Ray. You don't know that, not for certain. You didn't see him. He used to waltz around that site in his tin helmet like a regular little action man. Never got his hands dirty, though. Well? No, dicky bird. Well, try his home again and keep trying till somebody answers. Look, Ray, don't you think we'd be better waiting until Len comes back? Len? Who do you think got us in this mess in the first place? Just get Conran. This time I'm going to handle it my way. Well, what about your contract? There must be something in that that protects you. No chance. 
And what's the point in having one, then? If they have gone bust, all it says in our contract is that we get a bit of compensation. It's peanuts. We'll have to wait God knows how long to see that lot. What do you mean, if they've gone bust? Well, we've only got Conran's word for that, haven't we? Well, why would he lie about a thing like that? I'm not saying he is. He just might have made a mistake, that's all. Oh. Look, when a firm goes bust, when they go bankrupt, they've got to get a receiver in, haven't they, to make it official? Mm. I would have thought there'd been something in the paper about it. And there's not? Not unless I'm going blind, there isn't, there? Well, let me see. Of course, it might be just a temporary problem. You never know your luck. I know ours. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, come on. This job's been jinxed from start to flaming finish. Admit it, Len. I thought we had a belly full of that kind of talk from Langton last night. Well, I'm beginning to think he's got a point. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, don't go off enough. What are you going to do about it? I don't know. See what's happening here. I might go around and see the developers. And then what? I don't know then what, do I? I'll just have to sort something out. Sort something out? Len, do you know how much we're into the bank for? Nearly five thousand pounds. Five thousand. Just how do you see us sorting that out? Bank will have to give us more time to pay it back. Like a flaming lifetime. Rita, you were just as keen on this job as me in the first place, you know. Think big. Remember? Yeah. I'll ring you later. Len. I'm sorry. I just can't believe this is happening. Perhaps it isn't. I'll ring you later. Oh, Len. I've tried his home, love. Yes, and the site. All right. Condon's not in yet. She's going to get his partner, Dick Rawlins, to the phone. Oh, hello. Well, you know about this mess, then, do you? Yeah, well, you know more than us where the hell's Conran. Oh, great. Terrific. It's with their accountants, would you believe? Where else? Right, well, we still owed our last stage payment from you, chum. That's 429 quid, due yesterday. I don't care what kind of a jam the developer's in, you're the main contractor, so that money is owed by you. All right, well, if you're coming round, you better bring it with you, in cash. And we want to check for the rest. Every flipping month or so she turns in looking like that. And every time she gets in spitting distance of seeing doctor, she turns tail and runs for it. I'm sick of it. Has she been in an accident? Oh, hundreds of them, love. According to her, last time, she fell down the stairs. Time before that, she walked into a door. She must be running out of excuses. Excuses? For her old man. Every time he feels at odds with the world, he takes it out on her, don't he? Oh, the usual thing, you know. He hits her, you mean? Well, what do you think? Oh, well, best show willing. Sisters now on today, so guess who's left to hold the fort as per usual? Muggins. looking for someone, mate? Oh, I do. Uh, Dick Rawlings. You must be Ray Langton. Right. You best step inside, then. And the little place you've got. <clears throat> the wife did me. How did you? I am. Well, in fact, love, not about them. Not as yet, no. All right, then. Uh, no point in shilly-shallying. I'll give it to you just as Jim Conran gave it to me. The developers are bust. Kaput which means we're all numbered. We didn't get our last interim payment, so we can't give you yours. Not hotels come to that. It's that simple. No, it's not, mate. The developers didn't hire us, you and Conran did, so it doesn't take a genius to work out as you and Conran what owe us. But if they don't pay us, lad, how do we pay you? Well, that's your problem. Is he often like this? Only 50% of the time. Mind you, of course, we've only got your word for it. You didn't get paid. Ray? I'll pretend I didn't hear that. Well, we have. It's a fact, isn't it? You could easily have covered yourselves if you knew what was coming. The first we knew about it was yesterday, same as you. We had no previous warning and no previous knowledge, right? 
And chucking accusations like that around will only land you in more trouble. A lot more. Look, Mr Rawlins, you must have heard how we're fixed. I mean, replacing that gear we lost in the fire nearly cleared us out. So all we want to know is whether we get paid. Eventually, will I? Eventually? Well, these things take time. It's up to receiver now, isn't it? They'll have to sort out what's owed us, and then I'll be able to pay you. Well, some of it any road. Some of it? This job meant over five grand to us. How much is some of it? Well, a, a percentage. Nobody gets completely paid off on something like this. Oh, great. You don't seem to grasp what's happening, lad. The ship's going down with all of us on board. We don't get paid, you don't get paid. I can't spell it out any simpler. And I can't spell this out any simpler. We worked hard for that money and we plan on getting it. Ray. Now leave this to me. Now we've got a contract with you that states that you pay as and when it's due. Right, I'm telling you it's due. You can act tough all you want, Langton. It'll solve note. Note. Five grand. We stand to lose nearer forty. And you can count yourself lucky you've got this place to take over on. I've got to go back now and lay off twenty of my lads. Now, what have they got? A handshake and their cards and that's it. Now, that's the real cost of all this. Try thinking about that for a change. I've been waiting a long time. It's always rather a protracted business. They're so short-staffed. Luke, why not have some tea? You'll feel better for it, really. All right, then. Something to eat? I'm not hungry. So. Right, is it? Tea? Right. Mrs. Summers, doctor's ready for you now, love. Mm. Nurse, is she always in that state? She's been worse, love. Yeah, it's definite, love. It were in paper. Why well, can't Conrad help? Uh, What's the damage? It's 75 pence, I'm afraid. Now, never apologise to a customer, darling. It's the first lesson in good salesmanship. Always make the customer think you've done him a favour. Right. What about the bank, then? What are you going to tell them? What's this trouble? Yes, it's this new hotel that Len and Ray have been working on. Uh, apparently, the owners have gone bankrupt. Have they? That's not too clever, is it? And where does that leave Len and Co? Oh, he might well ask. All right, love. Well, try not to worry, eh? Give us a ring if you hear out. Try. You know, it's times like this you need a good lawyer. Times like this you need wind pools or a flaming miracle. How is that, is it? Well, it's not good. Ah, oh, well, I wouldn't worry too much. I mean, he got that order, didn't he? You can get another one. This time next week, ta. It'll be water under the bridge. Believe you me. See ya. Ah, it's funny, isn't it, how people can always make light of other folks' problems? As I recall this time last week, he were droning on about how that strike were going to make him bankrupt. It'll be all right, Rita. Something will turn up. Something always does. Yeah, with our luck, probably a bailiff. Right. Right. I'm off. He's still here. What does the doctor have to say? She must have said something. Sent me down to X-ray. Got to come back next week. Oh. Look, uh, did you see anybody? I mean, besides the doctor. A, a social worker. I I'm sure they'd be able to help you. No. You can't go home in this state. I'm not going home. You can't sit here all day, can you? I don't care what I do. I'm not going back to... I'm not. Will you come back with me, then? 
I'll give you some dinner and we'll talk about it. That's if you want to. I don't even know you. What does that matter? Anyway. Miss Bishop, Mrs. But Bishop, I'm a widow. But there's nothing you can do for us. Nothing. There's nothing anybody can do. I'll just finish my cigarette and then I'll go, all right? Go where? It's your husband, isn't it? He's responsible for... But he didn't mean it. It's just you don't know what he's doing when he gets like that. Like what? He just lashes out. But why? Do you have arguments? Of course we have arguments, but not all that many. No more than anybody else. But some nights he comes home and notes right. He don't like his food. Tell he's at wrong station. Well, anything can set him off when he's like that. So he hits you. Why don't you leave him? It's easier said than done. But look at you. Oh, I'm not always like this. And when he does it, me sorry after. He's more upset than me sometimes. It's like biting me. He's really punishing himself. Funny that. Punishing himself for what? You tell me. He gets these depressions. Not just down, but really low, you know, like, like there's no point to anything. And anything I say, he just twists it round, makes out it's my fault, like I'm to blame. Well, he thought it's me. after. He begs me to forgive him. Begs me. It's pathetic. A fully grown man begging. What can I do in bed? in Jeevil? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Pat. <coughs> Drop the pipe, will you, sunshine? It's like the black hole of Calcutta down there. Take heart, Frederico. When you get fixed up with your own place, you'll be able to delegate little jobs like that. Huh? Delegate. You know what Mrs. Walker does to you and me? Oh, that's what you call it, is it? You still fancy it then, dear Fred, being your own boss? Oh, you're not kidding. Well, it's no joke running the show on your tub, mate. If the Batman doesn't get you, the strikers do. Well, don't look at me. I didn't strike. No order. You just started it all and then kept your head down, didn't you? Well, I didn't ask them to strike on my account. Now, then, this is a demilitarised zone, unarmed combat only. Yes, love. Um, could I have a bottle of brandy, please? A small one. What, uh, it's last size? No, a quarter bottle. Uh, I just saw Mrs. Sharples, Emily. She's tickled pink about that bed. Uh, yes, it was rather a coup in the end, wasn't it? Brilliant, brilliant. You have a very fine criminal mind. Shh. That do you? Uh, fine. Feeling a bit under the weather? Mm -hmm. The brandy? Um, um, something like that, yes. Thank you. Emily Bishop, I am Brandy. Well, perhaps she feels in need of cheering up. I hardly think she'll find a solution in a brandy bottle. Well, I don't see why not. There's plenty that do. 
What are we going to tell the bank, then? Just hope that they give us a bit more time to pay it back. How long? Say three years. How much would that be a month? Um, 150 quid, approximately. It's split two ways, though. Langton's got to pay his half. All the same. Has he actually said he'll pay half? He doesn't have to, it's obvious. Well, he might not think so. Well, that loan was just as much for him as it was for me. Ah, with one exception, it happens to be in your name. Oh, he'll pay, don't worry. Ah, well, I'd like to hear him say it just the same. Better? Yeah. What about your parents? There must be somebody who'd take you in. <sighs> Nowhere, John won't find me. Where is he now? He's at work. He works for the gas board. I don't know what to suggest. I said nobody can help us. Even the police have said as much. The police? Yeah. This policewoman I used to go and see, she said the only way I could get help was by helping myself. Take out an injunction. How oh, can I? And he's still my husband, whatever else he is. You're very loyal, aren't you? I just keep hoping it'll change. Or he'll change. I'm afraid few people ever do. Is it all right to you? Your husband? Yes, very much so. You were lucky. Oh, it's no use. Ray, I'm wasting my breath. What jobs have we drummed up so far? One a blocked waste disposal unit, a washing machine to be plumbed in. It's not exactly going to make us millionaires, is it? Keep trying, eh? Mm. I feel such a fool apart from anything else. Hey, Rita. Button, they say. I'll handle this. No, it's, uh, it's just we found we were able to do the job after all, so it's all... Oh, yeah, I see. Okay, sorry to trouble you. Bye bye. No joy? Not so you'd notice. Don't you help pick up the pieces, have you? No, I think we should just get our heads together to find out how we're going to pay the bank back. Well, if I'd had my way, we'd never have bothered at all. I always said we was getting in too deep. What did I tell you? And what did you tell him? Nothing. Look, all that we've got to do is, first of all, find out how much we owe, and secondly, how we're going to pay it back. Well, the first bit's easy. It's the second bit that's a difficult one. Shouldn't be if we all chip in together. Rita. I'm entitled to my opinion, aren't I? Yes, but we don't exactly know what your opinion is, do we? Though I can guess. When you've quite finished, you two, we'd have been better sorting this out on our own, you know. Look, Deidre works here and all, you know, and don't you forget it. Just in case you forget, my livelihood happens to be at stake as well. How'd you make that out? The bank didn't give us that loan out of the goodness of its heart, did it? We had to put the cabin up as security, didn't we? Oh, yes, you did. And just in case any bright spark gets any more ideas, we are not selling the cabin. No way. To be throwing good money after bad. Yeah, but I mean, people do tend to summarise you by the job you do, don't they? I mean, what's the first question anybody asks you? What job you do? And it's not just curiosity. It's so that they can sum you up or categorise you. I can vouch for that, Ken. I mean, a bird asks, what do you do? How do you earn your living? And you say you're a pop man. <laughs> you stand no flipping chance. It cuts both ways, Chuck. You say you're a barmaid and they think they do. Mrs. <laughs> Walker. <laughs> what exactly did Emily say when she bought that brandy? Nothing much. She didn't seem unwell. A bit preoccupied, distracted, you know. Mm, perhaps I'll just pop down. Do you think of the summer talk? I think it might be wise to check, don't you? It was the first thing I liked about him. He were always larking around. Life and soul of the party, you know. He had such big plans. <laughs> what he wasn't going to do in life wasn't worth a doing. He's always had a temper. It's got him into a lot of trouble and all. We went to this posh restaurant once, just after we were married. And this bloke wouldn't let us in. John had forgot the invitation. It was a work to do or something. And he went mad, started eating out at everybody. Police took him away in the end for being drunk and disorderly, but he wasn't drunk, it was just his temper. It always comes back to his flaming temper. Will you tell him he went to the hospital? I'll have to tell him something. He'll be over his dinner by now. 
There'll be hell to pay along. You can't go back, Brenda. Not if he's going to be like that. You can stay here, at least for the night, and then, well, we might just come up with something, work something out. Like what? I can speak to one of the social workers at the hospital for you. Well, you've got to let somebody help you sooner or later, haven't you? But just for the one night, what have you got to lose? Nothing, I suppose. Right, then. Won't be a minute. Oh, Mrs. Walker. I hope I'm not coming at a bad time. No, of course not. Come in. Uh, this is Brenda Summers, a friend from the hospital. How do you do? Hello. Um, do you mind if I use the toilet? But of course, it's upstairs, first right. Ta. Excuse me. She's a patient from the hospital, actually. She's having rather a bad time. Whatever happened to her face? Husband. Apparently, he's rather violent. Oh, dear. Anyway, I've asked her to stay overnight, see if I can't help her sort something out. Really? So the brand was for her? Yes. How long have you known her? Well, just today. She was waiting outside casualty. I couldn't just leave her there. I thought if I could spend some time with her, I, I might be able to persuade her to see someone, a social worker, somebody at any rate. It is wise in this sort of thing to leave it to the specialists, yes. You think I'm interfering? Mm, no, of course I don't. No. It's just... Well, I just hope you know what you've taken on, that's all. Oh, I'm sure you do. Of all people, you know what you're doing. I let myself out. Morning. Here, when you get to our house, just see you leave us a decent bottle. I'm sick of taking the top off and finding the rim all cracked and chipped. It's not my fault, love. It's the dairy. Why do you want to tell them to use some decent bottles? You want to see some of the bottles I pick up? Filthy dirty. Green walls. Talk about penny shilling. Oh, not from our house. There's never a bottle goes out on my step without it has a good wash first. Mrs Bishop says, can you leave her an extra five, please? Hi, right, love. Morning. Morning. Here she is, Hilda, the wonder cleaner. Oh, an old little white tornado. Oh, little remarks for little minds. You're wasting your time because it just rolls off my back like a duck. Eh? I take no heed of insults about my cleaning. Well, you've got it wrong, Hilda. I'm not insulting it. I admire your cleaning. I've never seen anybody shift muck as fast as you do. The only trouble is it only gets shifted from one place to another, innit? We never know where it's going to turn up next. Oh, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Now, here. Who's that Emily Bishop's got staying with her? I didn't know anybody was. Oh, yeah. Just seen her. It's a woman, and I think she's got a bit of a black eye. It'll be her sister. Her that come up for Ernie's funeral, you know. No, no, it's not. Not like her. Oh, morning, Mrs. Walker. I was just saying, uh, I see Emily Bishop's got company staying with her. Yes, I know she has. Oh. A friend, is it? No, Mrs. Alton. Oh. Must be a relation, then. Is it? No, Mrs. Alton. Oh. Not a friend and no relation. Well, don't tell me she started taking in lodgers, and lodgers with black eyes at that. Mrs. Elton, I hope that what I am about to tell you will satisfy your curiosity about Mrs. Bishop's guest, because the situation is rather delicate. Oh, well, of course, I've never been one to pry. And I'm to be Queen of the May. I will merely say that Emily is playing the Good Samaritan and has given that young woman a temporary home and a refuge. How do you mean, a refuge? Well, it appears she came across her in the hospital, and I gather her husband knocks her about a bit. A battered wife, you mean? I believe that is the fashionable jargon, yes. Anyway, as I was saying, Emily, in the goodness of her heart, gave her a bed for the night. Oh, fancy. And I do hope, Mrs. Ogden, that we will all avoid making any difficulties for that young woman or for Emily by gossiping or prying. 
Oh, don't you worry, Mrs. Walker. If I hear any careless talk, I'll nip it in the bud. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's who she is, eh? Battered wife. Poor devil. I wouldn't stand for that off any bloke. Well, there's not much a woman can do, is there? Not against a bloke twice as strong as her. They're not twice as strong when they're asleep. If I were a battered wife, I'd damn soon be a battered widow. Well, I don't suppose you'll ever have the problem. You've got to get a husband first. Thank you, Hilda. At least that's one worry I'll never have. One thing my Stan would never do, he'd never raise a finger to me. That's only because he's too damn lazy. Um, would you like some bacon? I'll never eat breakfast, honest. Is it very painful? Fairly. I couldn't sleep on this side. Slightest pressure, and did I feel it? It's not as black round the eye. Oh, it generally fades after a day or two, then it goes all yellow and puffy. I really don't know how you stand it. I don't know. I've put up with it this long. You must do something, Brenda. You can't go on getting beating after beating. You've got to put a stop to it. There, there must be some way you can... Leaving him. That's the only way. Well, it's one way. In bed last night, I got thinking. Must have been with being on my own or something. I don't know why I've stayed with him, really. I mean, I don't have to put up with it, do I? No, we don't. I should have left him ages ago, shouldn't I? Well, I'm not quite sure what to say. Well, you said yourself you didn't know I'd study. Yes, I did. Well, you asked me to stay here last night so I wouldn't have to go home. Oh, yes, I know. Well, you see, Brenda... I want to help you, but... It's not for me to push you into something that isn't your decision. Well, I mean, what I mean is, it, it's not for me to tell you. You must leave your husband. Though, well, well, you've got to do something. And if you can't put matters right at home, well, then yes, I do think you've got to get away. I'll have to make a fresh start. Get myself a job, find myself somewhere to live. I'll make a start this morning. Oh, it won't be easy, I'm sure, but I'll help in every way I can, Brenda. I promise you that. You know, the women manage on their own. Well, I reckon if they can. Well, I can as well. Well, I'll tell you one thing. You needn't count on Ray Lankin helping us out of this mess. We're going to have to do it all. Ray does a lot of moaning. But when it comes down to it, he'll do his share. You reckon? Well, I can't help noticing that every time he comes up with any bright ideas, it's always for something you have to do. Well, check last night, when we were talking about getting rid of this debt. What was his bright idea then? That you let the bank sell the cabin. He's only facing facts. We've got to pay that money back somehow. But with his suggestion, it's always us that's doing the paying. We'll have to face it, Rita. The cabin might have to go. You can't be serious. I'm not saying it as a laugh and a joke. Well, there must be a way around. Not unless the bank gives us longer time to pay it back. And credits get in tight all the time, isn't it? Do you think they will? I've no idea. If they won't give me any leeway and I can't pay that money back, they're going to grab the cabin anyway. They've got the deeds. I can't believe it'll come to that. Well, it won't. If anyone's going to sell the flaming cabin, I am, not the bank. What's the difference who sells it? a hell of a lot of money. I'll get a damn sight more for it than the bank will. But we still lose the cabin. If we have to, yeah. Marvellous, isn't it? And whoever buys it gives me the push, I end up out of a job, and we're further up the creek than ever. Oh, there must be one you haven't read, Mrs Ogden. Oh, it's all these hospital romances. Do you know, I'm sick to death of stories about young nurses falling in love with dedicated doctors. It is a favourite theme, I must admit. I reckon out to doctors, me, you know. Oh, they might be all right while they're still young lads, but they're all half deaf by the time they get to 40. And all the ones I've ever had to do with have had cold hands. Ooh, it's like having a piece of dead fish laid on you. Oh, there is a romantic side to medicine, Mrs Ogden. Oh, give over. Not for doctors, there's not. I mean, all the people they ever meet have got coughs and rashes and boils and pimples and that. It's a wonder to me how any doctor ever works up enough interest to get struck off. Oh, just a minute. Uh, yes? Um, 20 cigarettes, sir, and a box of matches, please. Uh, that's fine. This? Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, you've got a card in the window, bed sitting room to let in Victoria oh, Street. Oh, yes. 
Can you tell me where it is? I don't live round here. Uh, yes, well, you turn right out of here and then you go right at the lights and then it's from Third Street along. Right. Thank you. All right. Hello again. Hello. Hello. So, oh, I feel sorry for her. Why? Who is she? Emily Bishop's putting her up. She's one of them battered wives. Oh, I see. She's a friend of Emily's, is she? Oh, no, no. Just a sort of lame duck Emily picked up at the hospital. Oh. They say her husband knocked seven bells out of her. Oh, isn't that off? Oh, there's a lot of them fellas about. Hit you as soon as Luke at you. Mm. Oh, there's worse things than being an old maid, you know. I don't reckon you've missed so much. Oh, hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Can I have a quarter of dollar mixtures for my little madam, please? You can. Quiet in here today, ma'am. <laughs> To be joking, I've been rushed off my feet. Mm. I never stopped hardly. What a bad little business this. Should fetch quite a good price. Ray. What do you mean, fetch a good price? Well, when Len sells it like. Sells it? What are you talking about? He doesn't know, love. He's wittering on as usual. Well, Mr. Fairclough's not thinking of selling, is he? Just take my notice, maybe. It's nothing settled. It's just a possibility, that's all. Nobody said anything to me about it. Ray, I've no business talking about it in the first place, Mary. So j j don't worry about it. Come on. Give us the same again, will you, darling? Who's Ray? Oh, hello. hello. What's your name? Hey, give us a pint. No, I'll make it a large scotch. Have you managed to sort out all your business problems? No, I've got one of those problems there's no answer to. Oh, come on, you've had a hard knock here, yeah, but there's got to be a way out. Yeah, it's easy enough to say that, isn't it? It's hard enough to find it. I mean, it's easy to be cheerful about other people's difficulties. No, not at all. I've been in Stuck myself, as you well know. And like I said, there's always a way out if you can find it. No, but the way that I've got, I don't like. I've got what you might call a liquidity problem. I need some quick cash. And there's only one way of getting enough of it, and that's by getting rid of something that I sweated blood to get. There you are, gentlemen. And Mike Baldwin, 88 pence. Good job I'm the magnanimous sort, isn't it? Keep the change. Are you trying to buy my favours? Uh, call it putting down a small deposit. Won't work, but keep trying. You've got to be talking about a the cabin, then, then. I am. Don't do it, mate. Get the money some other way. Beg, steal, or borrow it, but don't ever part with a going concern. That's good advice, then. I know it is, but I've got no option, have I? I've got a repaying in almost bank loan on schedule. Yeah, but like Mike says, there's got to be another way. All you've got to do is find it. Is your name Bishop? Uh, yes. What do you think you're doing? I've come for my wife. Well, just a moment. You can't come pushing your way into my house. Brenda, I know for a fact she's here, so don't start telling me any fairies. As a matter of fact, she is not here, and you've no right to come bursting into my house. I have every right. I want my wife. Brenda? Hiding upstairs, is she? No, she isn't. I've told you once. She isn't here. Brenda, I know you're up there. You're coming home. Brenda? I hope you're satisfied. I presume you've looked under the beds just to make absolutely sure. I know she's here. How dare you march about my house like this? You've no right to do it. Who do you think you are? She's here somewhere. And I tell you that Brenda is not here. Now, please go away. Ah, so you know who I'm talking about, do you? Brenda, my wife. Where is she? I haven't the faintest idea. Don't come that. You know where she is. She was here last night. Yes, she was here, but I've absolutely no idea where she is now. And I can tell you this, Mr. Summers. If I did know where Brenda was, I would not tell you. You've no right to come between husband and wife. It seems to me that's exactly what somebody has to do. If I've upset her, I, I'm sorry. I mean, we've had our ups and downs, but she's never walked out on me before. She should have done it long ago. I suppose it was you put her up to it. I knew it wouldn't be her idea. I knew it would be some interfering busybody who doesn't know what marriage is about. Well, I'm not going to stand here arguing with you. I want you out of my house. I'm not saying it's a perfect marriage. I'm only human. I've got me faults. But so has she. It's not all on one side. I 
don't know how you've the effrontery to talk like that after the way you've treated her. I don't know what tales she's been telling well, you. She didn't have to tell me anything. All I had to do was to look at that injured face. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I think you do. I work at the hospital. I've seen what you do to your wife. But I don't know what you're on about. I've seen the damage, the black eye and the bruises. That was nothing to do with me. She slipped, that's all. She had a bit of a fall. You've got it all wrong about me and Brenda. You really have. You're wasting your breath, Mr. Summers. Will you just tell her I want her back? So that you can beat her up again. All right. I'll admit I hit her. I, I did hit her. But it was only a tap. A black eye and heavy bruising. You call that a bit of a tap? I'm sorry I hit her. It was just a flash of temper. It, it was her own fault. She got me all worked up. You've been knocking her about for years. Well, that just depends who you believe, her or me. You're a public menace, you are. Interfering between husband and wife. Just tell her. I want her back, quick. Follow me. Hey, that window display of ours is looking dead tatty. You can change it tomorrow, Mavis. It'll be an outlet for your artistic talents. Shouldn't have thought there was much point in changing the window display. A waste of time, I'd have thought. All right, what disaster's befallen you while I've been out? I know. Albert Tatlock slipped you an Irish 10p again, hasn't he? No. No? Oh. Well, that fella's been in them. Him that tells you to repent before the world comes to an end. Oh, no, he's not been in for weeks. Oh? Well, maybe his world has come to an end. Well, some that's happened, I can tell with your face. Well, I just think you could have told me that song. Told you what? Well, if I'm going to have my home and my job sold off my head, I'd rather hear it from you than from one of the customers. All right, let's have it. What have you heard? Well... Ray Langton came in. I might have known. And he said you're going to sell this place, you and Mr. Fairclough. Well, I don't think you could have had the decency to tell me. Well, all right. You listen now, Mavis, because I'm telling you. Ray Langton has no right to say anything. More important, he doesn't even know what he's talking about. So you're not going to sell this place? No. Well, nor if we can help you. <sighs> what do you mean by that? Well, exactly what I said. Len doesn't want to sell. He might be forced to. It's possible. <sighs> hey, but just between you and me, Len's got an oil sheet lined up for this place who insists that you were part of the deal. Oh, very funny. No, really, because he says you remind him of his camels at home because you've always got the ump. Oh, come on, give us a smile. It weren't a bad funny. going on? Oh, um, Rawlinson's have been on. They want a new water heater putting in. And I've also rung Mrs. Fitzpatrick about her washer, and I said we'd do it on Friday. Your missus is pretty good at drumming up work for us, isn't she? Marvellous. And what's up with you? Oh, he's sulking. I'm not sulking, and I'm not knocking you, love. You get work for us great, but don't let's kid ourselves. We're not going to be pay off that bank loan with what we earn off jobs like that. So what do you want to do? Sit around moping all day? Well, do you? You're going to have to sell cabin. You won't. Look, Len, we we know it's half our debt and we're not trying to dodge it. We'll pay you back, but... Well, honestly, it's, it's going to have to be over a couple of years, maybe more. You've got it all worked out, haven't you? Well, I've got news for you. You'll have to do your sums all over again because I'm not getting rid of that cabin. No way. We'll pay the bank back some other way. Oh, what's mine I keep? It'll cost us 60 quid a week for two years. Bloody impossible! 30 quid a week from each of us. Oh, come on, Len. Where are we going to get that sort of money from every week? Be reasonable. Well, I've got one or two ideas when I'm going to raise my 30 quid. You two will have to get your heads together to find out where you're going to raise yours. And that's my last word. Actually, the thing that puzzles me is how he knew where you'd gone. I can't think how he traced you here, unless someone at the hospital told him. It were me, I told him. You? I phoned him up at work this morning. But why? 
I didn't want him worrying. I wanted him to know I were all right. Well, I can understand that, I suppose, but did you have to tell him where you were? Well, I didn't mean to, really. It's, it's just... He thought I was with a fella, you see. That's why I had to tell him about you. Well, I'm ready to listen to a list of bright ideas about how to raise 30 quid a week. Ladies first. Let's have your magical brainwaves. Oh, that's easy. I haven't had any. <laughs> well, I've had just the one. While I'm slogging away around the clock, tackling every job that raises its head, you can help us by getting an evening job. Oh, great. Do you think I've got enough jobs already? Mother, housewife, part-time secretary down at the yard. Well, what about me, father? Your odd job man, full-time grafter. And your old two of your jobs don't bring any cash in. Oh, that's true, yeah. Well, go on. What did you have in mind for me? I don't know. Hey, Beth. You need a part-time barmaid in here in the evenings, like uh, my missus, for instance. Well, it's not up to me, is it? It's up to Mrs. Walker. Ah, it's all right, Beth. Forget it. I mean, I have my doubts about Mrs. Walker as a mother-in-law. I certainly don't fancy her as a boss. It's all right for them that can be choosing. It's a bit of extra money you want to earn, dearie. I thought there'd be plenty of scope for a good-looking bird like you. Oh, thank you kindly. What did you have in mind? Oh, I don't know. Uh, getting one of those massage parlours. You know, the old sonar bath routine, massaging away the aches and pains of tired businessmen. Oh, I quite like the sound of that. Yeah, well, I don't, so forget it. Oh. Hey, Deirdre, I don't know whether what a bum is. That's if you really do it on an evening job. Or with a flying horse. Oh, tar Fred, I'll have a think about that. Yeah, I've just had a thought, Ray. If your wife goes out of work in the evening, you'll have to stay in and look after the nipper, won't you? You never thought about that one, did you, Raymond? Back to square flaming one. <laughs> Well, I'm really glad. I just know it's the right decision to hang on to the cabin, whatever else we do. Yeah, well, it's what you wanted. I know it is. What you wanted as well, isn't it? Yeah, sure it is. I'm really glad. We'll find some other way of raising the cash for the bank. Matter of fact, I've had a very good idea about that. Go on. Came to me in a flash. It's obvious, really. The Gatsby. You what? Start singing there again. They're mad keen to have you back, aren't they? Two or three nights a week, then. Well, you flaming hypocrite. What's up with you? You two faced beggar. What are you getting so aerated about? You couldn't wait to get me out of the gaps, but now you can't wait to get me back in again. You want to work there. You didn't want to stop. But I had to, didn't I? Because you didn't like it. And now all of a sudden, because you're short of cash, you have the nerve to turn around. Words fail me. If that isn't typical of a flaming female. You want to do it, but because I suggest that you go mad. I'm going mad at your turn round. It didn't matter what I wanted, but now, because it suits you all of a sudden... Well, I won't be used that way. You can forget the idea. Look, you've got it wrong. Oh, no, I haven't. You have. I'll have another good look round tomorrow. Don't worry about it, Brenda. You're welcome to stop here till you find a decent place. They say the evening paper's very good if you get it as soon as it comes out. I do mean it, you know. Till you find a place of your own, you're very welcome here. Bet that's him. Well, if it is, I won't let him in. Don't worry. Well, if he's in one of his moods, he won't wait to be asked, you know. I'm not going to be intimidated in my own home. Please stop hammering on my door. Is she coming back home? No, she's not. Well, if she's not coming home, she can have the kids. I can't cope with these two in a job and all. I didn't know there were children. There's plenty you don't know. Just tell her she can get on with it. Because I've had enough. Is toast all right? I mean, they're quite welcome to have an egg. No, they're not very fond mm. of eggs, neither of them. They're quite happy with toast and jam. Oh, I used to have quite an assortment of cereals in when um, my husband was alive. Two or three sorts. I'm not bothered, really, are you? But anyway, you were hardly expecting them, were you? Well, that's true. Some of heat up, lovey. Make your crust and make your hair curl. More milk. Okay. There you are. Do you like some more? Yeah. Boy. That's a good girl. Why didn't you tell me about the children? Didn't come up, did it? 
Oh, Brenda, you never gave the slightest indication. I never said I didn't have kids. I never lied to you. No. And anyway, I thought if I did say I had kids, you wouldn't have let me stop. Well, you wouldn't, would you? I don't know. How does your husband treat... I mean, he doesn't... No, he'd never lay a finger on him. It's only me. Do you think I'd let him stay with him if he did? What sort of a mother do you take me for? What sort of a woman do you think I am? I'm not with you. A fool or something. Oh, no, that's the last thing I think of you. And now you've got the nerve to ask me to go sing it when a few months ago and I wanted to, you made enough waves to sink a flaming battleship. How does that make you to be a fool? Just running my life to suit your convenience. There was no need then. There is now. Do you think I like the idea any more now than I did then? We're in a terrible mess. And I can't afford to be choosy if I could. There's no way I'd be asking you to do this. No way. Well, I still think it's stupid. I'm only asking you to do a couple of nights singing in a nightclub, not go on the flaming streets. After all, you are supposed to be my wife. Oh, it's not everybody, is it, that will have three complete strangers dropping in and not turn a hair? I asked Brenda to come. Yeah, but not the kids. Oh, they're no trouble. They're very sweet, really. Very quiet. Oh, poor little mites. With the background like they've got, they're probably terrified of opening their mouths. Oh, um, Renia, I would be grateful if, uh, well, I mean, it is her business. Oh, I won't say a word. I'm just sorry for her. And for you. Oh, now, no, you can't take that. I'll if your body's needed. Oh, no, you mustn't bother him. Oh, it's no bother. He's going out anyway. Just drop that in the templates, will you, love, please? Yes, yeah, certainly. Thank you very much. Right, eh? Hello. You're in a party? Right. Bills, bills, it never stops, does it? Oh, oh, you're telling me. You know, I wake up in the night dreaming I'm being chased by hundreds of little brown envelopes all yelling final demand. <laughs> well, you can't save either. It takes every penny you've got to live. Mm. <laughs> Cost of living doesn't seem to be worrying Emily Bishop much, though. She must have spent more in here just now than I spend in a month. Oh, she's got some visitors over for a couple of days. How did uh, Stan like that low-calorie soup that you got for him? Oh, not much. Them little tins is no good to him. You know, he drinks soup by the flipping gallon. Uh, who else has she got there now, then, besides this spattered wife? Hilda, it's none of our business. Well, it is, if she's going to make a habit of taking in waifs and strays. I mean, next thing you know, she'll be running a flipping doss house. <laughs> you do exaggerate, Hilda. Got kids there now, haven't she? Three scruffy little kids. What did you ask for, if you already know? Um, anyway, there's only two. Well, I think she's going a bit potty myself. Why? Um, don't you believe, then, in giving a helping hand? Well, not to somebody you don't know from Adam. Now, what does she know about this woman? For all she can tell, she could be a nutcase. Could have a prison record as long as your arm, anything. Oh, I think she's told Emily all about herself. Mm, don't mean to say it's true, though, does it? I mean, would you fancy it? Well, would you? Are you sure they'll be all right in the back? The park's not far. There's swings and things if you want to take them. They're in the yard at home. They're quite happy. Oh, we could all go this afternoon. I could put up a little picnic. Would they like that? They might. Does he, um, your husband, does he enjoy being with the children? He doesn't mind. What I mean is, Brenda, are there times when you are all just happy together, or is it always bad? No, it ain't always bad. Just when he's in one of his moods. But what puts him in a mood? What provokes him? Something must. He just gets like that. He gets fed up. And then he takes it out on you. Yeah, I suppose so. It's incredible. No, Rena thinks that Emily might be taken for a ride. Yeah, well, Emily's no fool, you know. Yeah, but she's very soft when it comes to sob stories, isn't she? Well, don't you believe that these things happen? Well, they happen all the time. I mean, the bit we see is only the tip of the iceberg. But if she's telling the truth, and there's no guarantee, well, there's a lot of to to help her. But it's just not Emily's responsibility. Mm, well, she seems to have made it hers. Mm. Yeah, well, she's got the kids dumped on her now, hasn't she? You see, Rena and me don't like to see anybody put on, especially somebody like Emily. I mean, not since Ernie. Yeah, I know, I know. 
Well, I, I suppose I could pop in and sort of discreetly inquire if I could be of any help. Yeah, well, I wish you would. She wouldn't resent it coming from you. Anyway, now he's doing great. Got his own little house, living his missus on a little car apiece, weekends on the beach. I don't know. Did he mention the snags? Well, I was thinking about buying a little sailing dinghy. I mean, Stan, when he was here, he had no had he flipping out. What do you mean, snags? Well, there's bound to be some, isn't there? I mean, you can't up six and go and live in a foreign country like that, can you? What about uh, homesickness? Has he mentioned that? You've got to ride over things like that, Stan. Anyway, New Zealand's not a foreign country. Oh, I'd not be trouble with homesickness. There's not a thing I'd miss about this dump. What are you doing hanging around here, then, eh? <laughs> Good question. You never thought of emigrating, Betty? You're trying to get rid of me? Not while you can still hobble to pumps and pull us a pipe, no. What's wrong with him? I haven't got your sex appeal, sunshine. Oh, that. I have like Hey, what are you doing here, bread with her? You're supposed to be at Wolfs and Holmes. So I shall be, as soon as I've finished my dinner plate. What are you doing here for that matter? Housewife and mother of one. I just want a word with Fred. Hey, I'll amend that last remark. I have got sex appeal. Really? Listen, Fred, you know that barmaid's job you're talking about at Flying Oars? Is it still going, you know? What do you want to know for? I'm talking to Fred. Well, I don't know. Look, I can give him a ring if you like, sunshine. No, forget it. You're getting no job at the Flying Oars. Listen, I've had Rita on to me again. She's being snidey about me not pulling my weight in the fur. But I mean, she's talking about how to get another job besides working at the cabin, obviously implying, why can't I? Because you've got a job and an home and an husband and a kid to look after. Any road, I'm not having you being chatted up by every loudmouth net who thinks he's buying the barmaid for the price of a pint. Hey, I heard that. This is a respectable occupation, I'll have you know. Yeah, well, you're used to it. She's not. Thank you. It's not me working in a pub you don't like the idea of. It's you having to stop at home babysitting while I'm doing it that doesn't appear. Now to do with it. Liar. Where are you going now? Home to polish me ball and chain. <laughs> <laughs> well, she doesn't really want to be a part-time barmaid. She'd not stick it a week. She's not going to get the chance to find out, is she? I thought we women were supposed to be liberated. Oh. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Well, have you thought about it? Yes, I've thought about it. And? What would you do if I said no? Go away. Leave me? No, of course not. Get a job. You've got a job. Yard's still there. Not one that brings in enough to pay off what I owe and keep you in tights and me and ale. Still in time? I don't want this hanging around my neck like a flaming albatross for the rest of my life. Do you? What sort of a job? Anything that will bring in good, fast money. Motorway, oil rigs, anything that's legal. You can't be serious. I am. If I graft till Christmas, I should be able to put a few bob aside, shouldn't I? It won't do any length and any harm to work twice as hard in the yard, you know. And if you want some labour in doing it, always bring in a kid. We'll manage. Oh, why can't he go? He's younger than you, fitter. Yeah, he's got a baby, and he'd be hardly fair. You're dead serious about this, aren't you? We're in a hole, and this is one way out. One way? Yeah. So the ball's back in my court now, isn't it? Well, I did make a suggestion. You said no. I'll just have to come up with someone else, won't I? I couldn't afford it, but I couldn't resist it. Do you ever get that feeling you want a completely new look? Oh, about every time I look in the mirror, love. <laughs> Anything else? No, thank you. Taking me somewhere special tonight. He won't tell me where he likes to surprise me. Hey, you've got a little gem there. You want <laughs> to keep hold of him. <laughs> Hi. Good morning, or is it good afternoon? Well, I've had my dinner, so it must be afternoon. <laughs> oh, I say, that's a nice shade. Can I try it? Oh, you can't. I haven't tried it myself yet. She has a very heavy date tonight. No. <laughs> you know, I can't decide whether to go casual or get dressed up a bit. Oh, blow it. I'll get dressed up. Make a change, won't it? See ya. Ta-ra. <laughs> Those were the days, my friend. Oh, no. <gasps> yes, love. Uh, 20 cigarettes and a box of matches, please. Then we'll do it. It's all right. Hello? Everything all right? Fine. She didn't know she's got it made, does she? Eh? Gail. Foot loose and fancy free, no responsibilities. Yeah, honestly, I wish it were me being taken out on a romantic summer's evening. We're now to worry about but what to wear. Oh, you've got compensations, though. Yeah? Oh, come on. A nice house, a lovely daughter and a good husband. Why? Oh, I know 
is having problems at the moment. But when all's said and done, it's only money. Oh, yes, big laugh, only money. Hey, <coughs> you think yourself lucky you're not in the same boat as her that's just gone out. You sound like me, ma'am. She used to say that. There's always somebody worse off than you, Deirdre. Now, when you're down, it doesn't seem to make much difference, does it? To tell you the honest truth, the only people I'm worried about right now is us. Brenda, we're going to have to have a serious talk. Oh? Well, of course, you're welcome to stay here just as long as you want. But you've got to make some decisions, haven't you? I mean, you can't just let things drift. How do you mean? What about your husband? About what you're going to do? I won't be a minute. He's a friend of mine. Pleased to meet you. And this is Samantha, and this is Wayne. Hello. Ken's a community development officer. He works just across the street. Oh, he's heard about your problem, and he wondered if... Um... Well, if I could be of any help in any way at all. Brenda? I I've just got to take the kids out. Uh, they need a breath of fresh air. It'll do them good. Come on, Samantha. Off you go. If we can find some swings. Brenda, Mr. Barlow only wants to help. What can he do? Oh, dear. I can't get through to her, Ken. I just can't get through. Why won't she let me help her? That's Frightened me life. Thought you weren't back till half past seven. I'm not. I left an estimate here for Lomax to look at before he confirms the order tonight. Anyway, we got now to burglar, wish we had. No laughing matter these days. You know Mrs. Clough from Hillside Avenue? She got one of them little tubs outside front door. They chucked all the flowers in the street and ran off with flaming tub. Got it. Right. You going out? It's no secret. I'd have told you when you come back. Ralph Lancaster. You going to Gatsby? Well, as you said, if I can earn a bob or two waddle in my tonsils, why not? Don't let me twist your arm. Well, it's not exactly a penance, is it? I'm really looking forward to it. After the blue murder you screamed at when I suggested it this morning. Well, it's a woman's privilege to change her mind. Anyway, I decided I'd rather be an overworked wife than an underworked widow. You don't reckon your old man is fit for much more than knocking in a nail or two nowadays, do you? I think you're fit for a lot more than that, love. I just don't think there's any desperate need to prove it. Not while I'm around. It's a good job I'm in a hurry, you know. I could ruin that makeup. Oh. Make sure that Ralphie boy gives you a start billing, eh? For me and Streisand, what else? See ya. Charlo. Hello. It's only me, Robbie. Come in. Is he in? If you meet the fella I'm wed to, you've just missed him. Oh. They're both working down Cross Lane. Back up past seven, if that's any use to you. Oh, I'll have to get somebody else. It's a birch. It's my ceiling. The water's all coming through. Oh, it has made a mess. Oh, Charlo. Charlo. She's been gone an awfully long time. Oh, it's a very nice afternoon. Yes, but uh, you don't think she's gone? Possible, I suppose, but uh, where would she go to? I can't imagine. She doesn't appear to have any friends. You do think I did the right thing, do you, Ken? In what way? Bringing her here in the first place. Well, she obviously needs help. That doesn't really answer my question. It's very difficult, Emily, isn't it? To decide whether you're interfering or not. Especially between husband and wife. A very tricky area. But if nobody interfered ever, people would keep getting away with it, wouldn't they? Men like him. Parents ill-treating their children. Bullies. I mean, it's our duty to interfere. Oh, yes, I know. Yes, you're absolutely right. I mean, I've done a lot of interfering myself, and I've got the scars to prove it. But, well, nothing's ever black and white, you know. Oh, I'm sure it is in this case. I'm sure he just hits her when the mood takes him, and she... Well, she just takes it. The They're toes. back. Hello. Did you have a nice walk? Yeah. We found the playground. 
can't get Wayne off the slide. Oh, I'm glad you've had a good time. I'll put the kettle on. I'm sure you'd welcome a nice cup of tea. Yes, and uh, I'll be going. Oh, you needn't bother going on my account. No, Ken, don't rush off. Stay and have some tea with us. You can even go mad and have a homemade scone. Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> Twenty quid. It wasn't in the house more than, oh, half an hour at the most. Yeah, the trouble is we've got you over a barrel in a yeah. situation like that, look. That's 40 quid an hour. <laughs> I'm in the wrong business. And they made me pay in advance before I'd even touch it. Yeah, well, that's how these cowboys operate, isn't it? They get your money, you never see them again. There's a proper plumber. How do you know? It said so on the leaflet. I mean, that's how I got him. You see, this leaflet came through the door two or three weeks ago and I just shoved it in the drawer. He said emergency plumbing service on yeah, it. Yeah, well, it doesn't mean to say he was qualified. He might not have even oh. been trained. Well, he doesn't do that, though. It's against the law, isn't it? Well, unfortunately, Elder, it's not. The council at this moment are trying to get all plumbers to register and qualify before they go into business. I mean, as things stand, anybody can go into business, even you. <laughs> that's ridiculous. It is. Isn't there anything she can do? Well, I don't know if she's been done yet. Might be a perfectly good job. My advice is get either Len or Ray to have a look at it. I mean, it might be a decent job, even yeah. if it is a bit steep at the price. Uh, it might not. I didn't fancy the look of him right from the start. Mm. I'll get Len to go around and see it. I don't know. If that little maggot's twisted me, I'll kill him. Hey, hey, steady on, Betty, love. You've been giving yourself blood pressure. <laughs> it's not fair, though, is it, taking advantage of women like that? They do it the whole flipping time. Plumbers? Fellas. Well, 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 if it isn't the lovely Rita. <laughs> and how's my favourite song bear these days? How do I look? In a word, blooming. Then I'm blooming. In this light, I'm blooming. <laughs> Are you busy, Ralph? Never too busy for you, darling. Always a pleasure to greet an old friend. Though I must say, I'm surprised to see you in here again after the last little run-in I had with your old man. Oh, well, things change. Oh, let's show off the lead a bit these days, is it? Can't be bad. So, what are you going to have? No, 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 don't tell me. I remember. Jose, a vodka and lime for the lady, and make that a double, and the usual for me. I picked that out this afternoon. It tells you everything you need to know about getting an injunction. You don't have to keep being assaulted, Brenda. And it only takes a very few hours. Um, tomorrow morning, if you do it, if you like. Where does she go? The nearest county court. It's got everything in there. And it's done in private. If you have any witnesses, you know, someone who, um, well, saw him, then you take them with you. And a doctor's note is a useful thing to have. I'll come with you if you want moral support. How does it stop him? An injunction? Well, when you take out the injunction, you ask for the powers of arrest. And then when you do call the police in, they'll, uh, well... They don't come. They won't come. They, uh, they don't like interfering in domestic disputes, no, but if you have a legal injunction like this, then if he hits you, he's actually breaking the law and they can arrest him for it. Send him to prison, you mean? Well, if it comes to that, yeah. And what good would that do me and the kids? Him in prison? How would we live? Yeah. 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 Well, oh, it's an old pipe, an old lead one. Has he fixed it, though? I mean, has he done a proper job? No, he's just patched it up, taken out the leaky bit, put in a bit of rubber tubing, a couple of jubilee clips, that's all. Oh, that's what we would have done temporary just to hold it till we put a new pipe in. Temporary? It's charged me 20 quid. Oh, well, you'll have to get him back pronto. You must be joking. They get your money and never see him again. It's a racket, is that? You two want to try that, you know. You've been in there since no time. They should do no such thing. It's highway robbery. Anyway, thanks for going round, Len. I suppose my best bet now is to get you to get it right. Me or somebody else, it won't last the way it is. Sure, money down the flipping drain. Serves me right, though. I mean, I should have waited, but you see, my ceiling was soaked and I, I couldn't turn the stop tap off. Yeah, well, that's what they prey on, isn't it? People who panic. Oh, thank you. No, I mean emergencies. They're not bothered about bread and butter jobs. There's no cash in that. You know, Stan might not have a bad idea then when you think about it. We could concentrate more on emergency jobs and helps, right? That is an area where you can really bump up your prices and get away with it. I hope you're not serious. Of course, it's wrong. I am serious. But we need profit, don't we, and fast. Why should we be mugs and let others rake it? You mean turn it? The cowboys and do her like that firm that did Betty. Ah, but we'd do a proper job, wouldn't we? Wouldn't be a con job. Get their money's worth, even if it is quite a lot of money. <laughs> oh, sorry, I wasn't much help. You did your best. She's not going to do anything, you know. 
She just needs more time to think. I doubt she'll even do that. She can't go back to him. Not if she won't take any action to defend herself. You can't stop her, Emily. It's her life. I can offer her support, a home, a place to be until she is in a position to see things more clearly. You let her stay here indefinitely? Yes. And the kid? Well, of course. And don't tell me what to say to her. I'm not. I am doing it for her sake, yes, but it's for my sake, too. I haven't felt involved. I haven't felt I really mattered to anyone since Ernest died. Now I do. I wish you luck. Uh, Look, it's great to see you again, Rita, but I've got to get this show on the road. Oh, I... well, Ralph, this wasn't exactly a social call. No. No. Uh, last time I was here, you wanted me back, remember? Oh, well, that was months ago, Angel. Yeah, I know, but uh, there was even talk of me having a twice-weekly spot on a regular basis. Oh, you're ever loving. Put the block on that. Yes, well, he won't now. He's quite happy for me to come back. I'd really like to, Ralph. Tell the truth, I've missed it. Sorry, love. You don't want me? Your favourite songbird? Oh, but you are, Rita. Believe me, I'm your greatest fan. I mean, myself, I think you're fabulous. But don't call us, we'll call you. No, it's not that. What is it, then? Well, I'm booked up, plain and simple. For how long? The foreseeable future, really. Bit unusual, isn't it? You don't normally book that far, Ed. Oh, well, I must be getting more efficient in the old age. Yeah. You've got a class act, Rita. I just wish... I wish I could use you. Yeah, of course. Hi, darling. Mm. Mm. Jim is unloading the gear. He says, have you got the new mic rigged up? Yeah, I have. Oh, uh, Jilly, this is Rita. Rita? Jilly. Okay, I'll go and plug my rollers and I'll see you later. Right. Is she what you're all booked up with? Well, she's one of them. Look, I've got to get things moving. Now, don't you rush away. Have another drink. It's great to see you, Rita. Great. <coughs> Can I have a packet of tea, please? Come on, I've got a kettle on. I was just wondering. What? Whatever happened to the Sunday suit? You know, getting yourself all togged up in your Sunday desk with shiny shoes and water on your hair. Same thing that happened to knowing your place and keeping it. It went out of fashion and a good job and all. I can I have my tea, please, before my throat thinks I'm lost in a desert? Oh, I hope nobody saw you come in. Ta, will you put it on Deirdre's next bill? I see there's another Sunday custom that's gone to the dogs and all. What? Well, it's hardly the good boot you're reading there, is it? Well, what do you suggest we all do today? Do? Where's the sort of Sunday treat? What do you do on Sundays at home? Oh, nothing, really. It's just like any other day, except John's at home. He usually stays in bed till dinner time. I can't because of the kids. Oh, well, we're all up and doing. Uh, let's see. We could go to the park. I don't like parks. I don't like midges and that. And anyway, kids always run wild. Hmm. Well, we could go on a coach trip somewhere. They're not very expensive. Samantha's always sick on long journeys. And Wayne's not all that clever on a coach either. Oh, thank you. You wouldn't like to come to church, would you? No. But don't let me stop you going. Should I take the children? If you like. Right. Oh, well, that's what I'll do then. It'll take care of the morning, at least. I bet John's still in bed. You could sleep on a clothesline, could John? He is quite adept at some other things as well, isn't he? Like hitting you when the mood takes him. You know, he used to be late for work when he were on nights through oversleeping. You not credit that, could you? How long have you been up? About half an hour. Had your breakfast? Of course I have. You might have brought me a cup of tea. What, ruin your beauty sleep? Can't she afford it, I ask myself. Hey, you're going to end up back in bed. Hospital bed. 
Actually, I didn't sleep well last night. I didn't notice. True? Len, I can't be over the hill, can I? Hey. Well, that's the inference, isn't it? That's the conclusion to be drawn. How'd he work that out? Did Ralph Lancaster give me a job? No, he didn't. That's only because he was booked up. I mean, the Gatsby's hardly the London Palladium, is it? One singer and that's his lot. You were just unlucky. Might have thought I were past it. Did he say that? No. Did he infer that? No. Then what makes you think he thinks so? Because I do. I give up. In fact, I think I'll go and see him and ask him. I wouldn't. Why not? He might confirm it. Well, I'll be sorry. I asked them, won't I? And I can blame you for letting me go. Mm. Any calls? Eh, no. No, you. No. Flipping it. Give them a chance. I mean, it's not middle of winter, is it? Bursts and that are hard to come by this time of year. Richard, there are other sorts of emergencies. Of course there are. Lavies, heating. And when do they always go on the blink? Weekends. I know, but 40 quid for changing a washer. I mean, you're not just cowboy plumbers. You're a couple of con men. Rita, love, we owe money. We owe a lot of money. And there's only one way of getting it. That's by him and me working a damn sight harder. And that's something you don't seem to be able to manage. Thanks, Len. Thanks very much. What were all that about? Ah, yeah, forget it. Well, go on, answer it. Back love and Langton, plumbers. Uh, yes, madam, we do, yeah. Oh. oh, and it's all a mess, is it? Right, well, tell me the address. Yeah. Yes, all right. Fine, yes, madam, will do. And thank you to you and goodbye. Well? It's a burst, isn't it, in Richmond Street? I told you it'd work, I told you. It's money for jam. I don't care who he is, me say it. Any woman what gets clobbered by her husband must have done something to deserve it. Stands to reason. What do you do? Eh? Well, I heard the first thing that stand us in the morning is land you a fortune on. Whose <laughs> that'll be the day? It's what most women are short of. Watch what you're saying, Stanley. My granddad used to take his belt to my grandma one day a week, Fridays. And you couldn't wish to meet a nicer woman. Bring back the belt for wives, eh, Stanley? You could launch a new political party with that slogan. I'll get a few joining and all. Hey, watch it. Yes, sunshine. Uh, light ale, please. All right. How are you feeling now, love? Uh, fine, thanks. Good. That's the spirit. Yeah. Hello there. Oh, hello. You still with us then? Yeah. Uh, Bishop's setting kids to church. Oh, has she? Yeah, I often say I'll go myself, but uh, never seem to get round to it somehow, says he with a glass of beer in his hand. Well, maybe if we all went. Well, everything would be a lot better. I wonder if it's that simple. I wonder. If I ate, you were a funny colour before you had that. Yeah, I felt a funny colour taste of this place it never seems to leave my tongue for long these days why don't you ever get a day off not often anyway what are you doing back here again a miracle hasn't happened julie hasn't died in a sleep or anything well talking about sleep no, i don't get enough i don't know about you well i didn't last night oh len get a bit steamy on a saturday night does he <laughs> thank god i don't have to earn my living as a comedian yeah all right i'm neither in shape nor in the mood for fencing what is it what do you want why don't you give me a job? Because I'm booked up. Liar. You're so pip for yourself. Pip? Thought it were Julie. I call her Pip. It's a sort of pet name. Sweet. Well, Rita, look, I don't have to pursue this conversation. As far as I'm concerned, it was closed last night. Now, I've got a head like a pressure cooker and I've got things to do. Honest, if you'd have had a job, you'd have given it to me. Well, of course I would. Gladly. <laughs> I'm a fan, Rita. What makes you ask? Oh... Nothing, just... Come here. It's the first time I've turned you down, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's nothing personal, Rita, believe me. No, I'm sure it isn't right. I mean, not only do I respect you as an artist, I fancy you. Oh, what about Jilly? <sighs> Look, what is it? Is it money? Or are you just bored with... <sighs> well, are you just bored? Let's say it's a bit of both. Then why not nip round to the tannery, then? The Tannery Social Club? Yeah, it's audition day, isn't it? 
Why not go and make some concert secretary very, very happy? Not to mention his members. What? Work in a working men's club? Oh, there's some very nice ones, darling. That's where all the money's spent in stagnant old Britain. I'm not bothered about the premises. It's the clientele in some of them. Well, that's up to you, darling. Yes. I suppose it is. Sorry to have disturbed your Sabbath. Any time, Rita, you know that. Hello. Here we are. Home again. Oh, they were marvellous. They really were. Good as gold. Everyone said what lovely children they were. <laughs> Which they are. Now, would you like a drink of pop? Of course you would. Come on. Into the kitchen with your Auntie Emily. There we are. What have you been doing with yourself? Oh, nothing much. Oh, it's a lovely morning. I've been out. Oh, where? I just went down to the pub. I just had one drink, that's all. That fellow was in there, Ken, um... Ken Barlow? Yeah, that's him. Oh, I am pleased, Brenda. What for? For you, getting out and about, in the rovers, socialising, making friends locally. Just shows how much you're improving. Yeah. You said I look better. <laughs> you know, I was so sure. If she can only get away from... find a refuge, a safe harbour, I said to myself. I was certain that's all you needed. You see, I'm being proved right, aren't I? Yeah, I suppose so. And after only a few days. Just imagine what you'd be like after a week. A month. Oh. You'll be a new woman, Brenda. Just you see. I'll see you are. I really will. Well, shall we have some lunch? Not very hungry, thanks. Oh, but I am. All this activity is putting a very sharp edge on my appetite, not to mention my spirits. And I'm sure these two are famished, aren't you? So, shall we have a nice sardine salad? What do you say to that, Samantha? Wayne. And uh, bananas and cream off the top of the milk to follow. I'll go. Have a good time then. Hmm? We're going to the park on the way back. On the street, on the street. Yeah. Hello, Brenda. Hello. Hello, Wayne. Sam. Not going to give your dad a big kiss then? Oh. Have you missed me? Because I tell you, I've missed you two. What do you think about that? Missing a couple of ruffians like you two. What have you been doing with yourselves, eh? Looking after your mum, like I told you. Have you? What did you do this morning? Then all done and dusted. Well, that didn't take you long, did it? No, well, I've done a few bursts in my time. Yes, I'll tell you, you were a godsend. When I came down here this morning and saw the mess, I thought, if I ever am I going to get a plumber today? And then next door neighbour had one of your cards. Weren't that a lucky thing, eh? Uh, uh, right then, I suppose you'll want to get home to your dinner now, won't you? <laughs> uh, what do I owe you? Well, let's see, um, well, I say it's Sunday. Oh, I Wait just a minute. I'll go and get my purse. Found it first go, <laughs> which is somewhat unusual. <laughs> is your wife always losing the purse? I know <laughs> I am. Uh, right then. Um, hey? Well, what do I owe you? What's the damages? Unless you've to add it up on one of them computers. Yeah, I do hope not, because you know I'm only a pensioner. Yeah, well, like I was saying, as it's Sunday, it'll be a bit more expensive. He was expecting that. Cos you've to pay for convenience, haven't you? Well, normally, I mean, on a normal weekday, it'd be... Well, with time, materials... Yeah. It'd be about four quid. Oh, would it? Yeah. yeah, about four quid. But this is Sunday, isn't it? I don't think I could charge you less than... You know, there are some fellas who charge you 20 quid for a job like this. 25 for coming out on a Sunday. They'd never, would they? 25 quid for a little bit of a job like that. You call that barefaced robbery, I do. Why well, could never afford that on my pension? What would I use for my gas bill? My electricity bill when it comes in and my rates? 
Yeah, I reckon chaps like that want locking up. Don't you agree, love? Should we call it a fiver? Hey, well, I can't argue about that, can I? Bye, that's very reasonable indeed, that is. Thank you very much. Do you know, I liked your face as soon as I saw you. Sir Arlo. Well? Well, what? How long are you going to keep this up? Stop in here. I don't know. You don't know? No. Well, I do. I want you back home today. You can't make me, you know. I can, you know. How? Oh. Oh, come on, Bren. It's not the same without you. House is empty. No kids, it's like a morgue. I can hear myself think. I thought you liked it like that. You always complain about racket when we are there. Well, you don't know what you're missing till you miss it, do you? Well, you don't know what you do want, do you, John? That's your trouble. I want you back home today. What's going on, Brenda? Can't you leave us alone for just a minute? This is my home, Mr. Summers. Yeah, don't I know it? Brenda, he wants me home. Not again. What's the matter? Discovered you can't manage on your own, have you, Mr. Summers? That's the usual story, isn't it? I can look after myself, Mrs. Bishop. I'm a very good cook, as it happens. Here's that chilly. It's out of the question for her to go home, isn't it, Brenda? Look, supposing, supposing I promised, promised faithfully, never to lay a finger on you again. But could you keep that promise? You couldn't, could you? I could try and keep it. How many times have you tried in the past? It's not deliberate, you know. I don't do it deliberately. I can't believe it's accidental. You think I like doing it, don't you? You think I enjoy it, you know? It's not unknown for people to enjoy inflicting pain and suffering. It just happens. What sort of an excuse? I get paid up, cheesed off, and it just happens. A bitter. I could kill myself after. I never touch the kids, though, do I, Brent? Never. I'm sorry, Mr. Summers, but you can't take your frustrations out on your wife. She's not your personal whipping boy. A punch bag. And you don't just hit her once, do you? One blow. Not with the injuries she's had. Appalling injuries. What do you know about it, eh? What do you know about me? Look, things just don't go right for me. Never have. I, I don't suppose they ever will. I've got a lousy job and a lousy wage. Where's the future in that? I mean, we're all entitled to something. There are lots of men in exactly the same situation, Mr. Summers, and they do not go about beating their wives. I don't think you've heard one word I've said. Not one word. What are you? One of these newfangled women who can't stand the sight of men. You look like you could be. But I'll come again, Brenda, I'll not... I want you home. It's where you belong. Another crisis over. Not even a bruise. His job is very boring, you know. Yes. Yes, I'm sure it is. I'll just go and make us some dinner. I'll, uh, I'll just finish my cigarette and have a cup of tea. You're back from wherever you've been. Oh, and she quit. As a flash. Where have you been? Making a fool of myself. Oh, go on. I'm interested. Well, I went back to see Ralph Lancaster for reasons which shall remain nameless. And he told me to go to the Tannery Club. Ah, they're looking for barmaids there or something. Oh, very good, that did. We're very good. No, they were having auditions with singers, comics, fan dancers, you name it. So did you get your name down as a fan dancer? You might have got a job as a comic once. No. Got my name down with a couple of secretaries, but my heart weren't in it, and I think they knew it. Well, maybe you're getting what? Choosy. 
Exactly. That's just what I am getting. Well, you do, you know, when you get older. Cow. <laughs> Is that how I do? I know it sounded like. Oh. Hello, the hunter's home from the hill, no less. I'm not looking too chuffed about it. Mm -hmm. Well, how much did you filch from the old and the lame? All right, all right. Ray? Enough. Can't you put a figure on it, Len? Or are you too ashamed? Yes, I can. I made a tenner. A tenner? But you're out half the day. Well, I only had two flipping jobs, didn't I? I know, but at the prices you were going to charge, that would be about 60 quid. You couldn't do it, could you? My lovely pudding of husband couldn't do it. No, I flipping couldn't. The first one was a pensioner, the second was a widow with a blind oh. dog. No <laughs> way could I... Oh, isn't he lovely? Now, isn't he lovely? And what category of customer did you have? Langton. Uh, a young couple and a fellow with a sick missus. Yeah, I suppose you charged them top work. No, I made 15 quid. Nine from the young couple because it took some gear and six from the other one. Oh, wonders never cease. My husband's got heart. <laughs> I don't <laughs> believe it. I thought you'd definitely... You know what that proves, don't you? What? That you're still the biggest stinker, but not by much. Oh, come on. You can tell by looking at his dimples he's got a marzipan sensor. Oh, shut up. <laughs> left them drying themselves. They're quite safe. <laughs> oh, don't they enjoy bath time? Oh, there's no need to tidy up. I rather like the place being in a bit of a mess. Brenda? We're going, Mrs Bishop. Pardon? I said we're going. Where? Where do you think? Home. But why? The kids are getting homesick. I've not noticed. And Samantha's been crying. When? But we're going home, Mrs Bishop, and that's all there is to it. Back to him. But why, Brenda? Things won't be any different, will they? Perhaps today they might, and even tomorrow. Maybe a whole week when he's quite pleasant, and then something upsets him, and... I'm giving you the chance to start a new life, Brenda, you and the children. You can stay here for as long as you want, certainly till you sort things out. Get a job, a divorce, a new start. A divorce? Oh, it's not impossible. How many other women in your situation would... Well, they jump at the chance I'm offering you. No more rows, no more fear. You must be afraid of him, you must. No more pain. And I'm sure it would be best for the children. He never touches the children. But he touches you. He beats you for no reason. Oh, perhaps he won't again. Perhaps he's learnt his lesson. What makes you think that? He has got a lot on his plate, you know. A lot of worries, money, his job. Don't go, Brenda. Give yourself a chance of life. We're going home, Mrs. Bishop. Why? Because that's where we live. We don't live here. You live here, Mrs. Bishop. Oh, Damn. Ray's not as hard as he'd like to think. Oh, what fellas? We can twist you around a little finger, can't we, Alf? Oh, no, come in. <laughs> it hasn't taken you long, if that's true. And what's you operate, though? Oh. <laughs> oh, you're not still on about me and Len, are you? And why not? I think it's a lovely, wistful story. It doesn't pay us flaming debts, though, does it? He's right. Now, listen, we're out for a night out. The subject is barred. Listen, can I just mention one thing? One thing? Right, well, I thought if you and me worked for maybe a year without wages... You thought? Yes. What was the conclusion? No. Good girl. <laughs> I don't know what you're That's bothered about. You'll pay this lot off in quick sticks. Of course you will. It'll be a bleak existence before then. Then. <laughs> Ken! Hello. Yes? Before you order a drink and sort of get settled in, yes. can I put a proposition to you? Oh, well, uh, yeah, please do, please do. Well, I'm at a loose end and you're at a loose end, aren't you? Yes. And it's a beautiful summer evening. What do you say we make sweet music together? Oh, ignore her, Ken. She's what they call a flipper, did you? But... Ah, yes, but she's lovely with it. Oh, isn't yeah. She? What do you think I should do, Stanley? Stick the beer, mate. It's safer. There speaks the voice of experience. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll have a drink and think about it. Coward. Anyway, you've not got a car. Oh. Have you? <laughs> Evening. Did you church, Hilda? No, huh? You're all dressed up. 
Oh, I don't have to go to church to get dressed up better, Turpin. Well, come on, Stan, get us a drink in. Right, tail, Betty. I'll have a port and lemon if you don't mind, seeing hey. as how it's Sunday. Hey, yeah, uh, Ken, I don't know what's going on at Emily Bishop's, but uh, I've just seen that lot leaving uh, with the kids. Leaving? Well, they was walking down the street carrying bags and that. Looks like they were leaving to me. Oh, dear. Well, I wonder what could have gone wrong. Just popped in to say hello to you and my favourite girlfriend. Which one? How many women have you got in this house, Stanley? I'm talking about the Lady Hilda. In the kitchen, is she making a nice little fried breakfast? That's my breakfast. She's not here. You don't mean she's left yet? No such luck, no. Gone for the day to our Trevor. I don't know why he didn't ask her. Look, uh, I'll be quite frank with you, Stan. I'm, I'm starving. Well, you can have this too. I'm not having that. It's all beans. I'll tell you what, I'll hang on here while you go and do some more. Are you opening them? This is the last of the bread. Hmm. Well, in that case, I'll have it. Aren't you doing any washing up? I'm not washing up when she's not here. She'll have me washed up when she's back, won't she? Oh, good thinking, Stanley. I'll tell you something. When we got wet, she got me washing up, and I didn't like it. So, I uh, dropped things accidentally on purpose. You know. <laughs> You're not as daft as people make out, are you? No. I've always said that. Hey, while the cat's away, how about the mice having a bit of fun? Look, I'm the man in this house, not the mouse. What sort of fun? A nice day at the races. Hey, a cracking idea. It is, isn't it? Look, we'll have a few bevies, pick the right GGs, give the bookies a good hammering, and come home with a nice folding wad of folding money. Money? That's the trouble. What's up? I'm skint. Can't even pay the bus fare, then, mind gambling. Look, if you lend me son, I'll pay you back out of my winnings. Well, I would, mate, only I'm skint and all. I was going to pay you back out of my winnings. Oh, that's it then, isn't it? I know a boy had Elder's coal money. <laughs> Dear Stanley, don't think you're spending me coal money because you're not. That's why I've shifted it. She's always funny about money. Ah, no, her electric tin. Ha <laughs> ha! Here, there's more to this letter, Stan. Mm. And don't bother looking in my electric money tin, because I've shifted that as well. You idle, thieving vagabond. And she has. P.S. If you're stuck for money, get out in that window cleaning round. Oh, it's yo, she's got well, you weighed up to an ounce, hasn't she? I'll have to go out on the round, won't I? Only, my back's bad this morning, you know. I'll tell you what, I'll help you. I'll do the ladder work and we'll split 50-50. How's that? Could do, I suppose, yeah. Well, show a bit of enthusiasm, mate. Listen, we'll have a good day at it today, make a few bob, and tomorrow we'll go racing. Right. We'll go the other side of the Red Rick, um, uh, Black Dyke Street. I haven't been there for a long time. Come on, right. Today we clean the windows, tomorrow we clean the bookies. Yes, I think I'll take that one, please. Get well soon? Who's poorly then? Nobody. It's a Peter, actually. Not that he's ill. I don't get it. Well, he's just taken his O-levels, or some of them, and from the odd phone call from Glasgow, I gather he's a little frail after the event. So I'm going to take the liberty with some words in there, you know, give him a laugh. You reckon? Well, that sort of thing amuses 15-year-olds, doesn't it? Did when I was a lad, anyway. Well, let's hope he takes after his dad, then. Are we going to be seeing so much of him these holidays? Yep, he's coming down in a week or two. Oh, good. Well, keep your voice down, because you'll only make Mavis restless. She'd give her cotton socks to have a young man coming to spend the summer with her. Oh, I don't know why you say things like that, Rita. It only makes you so comic. Hark at Lady Muck. it would be very <laughs> nice to see Peter again. Here, I bet Mr Tatlock's looking forward to his visit. Yes, he is, and so am I. Oh! Trapped in a discotheque with a stone deaf drummer. It's that trot that's, that's standing empty, somebody started doing it all. Sounds more like someone's knocking it down. Oh, some chaps arrived in a van this morning. I don't know what they're doing, but we keep going long periods of silence broken by short bursts of sheer bedlam. Oh, what sort of a business is it going to be? I've no idea. We didn't even know anybody had bought it until all this row started. Don't worry, Ken. By tea time, we'll have it all sussed out who they are, when they're going to open, and what they have for breakfast. <laughs> Hello, Good morning, Al. Can you have a small loaf, please? Good morning. Yes, isn't it? It's lovely. 
Um, and a tin of beans, please. Large one? Medium, I think. Uh, no, better make it a small tin. Oh, good to see you're cooking for yourself again. We get all the evidence in shops like this, you know. You can always tell when folk are buying in. <laughs> yes, I suppose it must be obvious. Well, when that woman was staying with you, you know, her what's husband banjoed her. What was her name? Brenda, Brenda Summers. Ah, well, when she moved in, it was large loaves, large tins. Mm, well, there were the children as well. They were the ones I did the bulk buying for. She hardly had anything. Ah, well, you have a bit more money in your pocket now. Now you take it for yourself. I think I'd rather have the company than the cash. I must say, now she's gone, and, and those children, the house is awfully quiet and very empty. It's made me realise more than before. Well, to be quite honest, and I, I find this rather hard to say, but well, the truth is, I'm lonely. Ah, it is a bit hard to admit, isn't it? What is? Being lonely, love. I mean, when I lived by myself, you know, before Renie and me were married, if you'd have asked me if I was lonely, would I have admitted it? Would Acres like? Why not? Well, I can't rightly say, Mrs Sharples. But I'll tell you what, a man would rather admit he's wearing a wig than let on he's lonely. Oh, it's not just men, Alf. A woman doesn't like admitting to it either. Perhaps it's something about not attracting other people. I mean, it's like saying people don't seek my company because I'm not attractive enough. Oh, I know what's up with you, Emily Bishop. You've had your house full for two or three days and now it's empty again. <laughs> That's it exactly, I'm afraid. Of course it is. Who knows more about living on their own than me? Have you heard from her, by the way, that young woman? Brenda? No, I haven't. Oh, you'd have thought she'd have kept in touch after mm -hmm. all the help you gave her. Oh, I didn't help her at all, Alf. I think she helped me more than I helped her. At least there was some life in the house. So now you're wondering which is worst, are you? A woman with a house full, even if her husband's a bad or a woman on her own? Hey, 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 women do have a choice, you know. It's not a case of being on your own or being bashed about. We're not all bad uns, us fellas, you know. I'm not. But the good ones are not easy to find. And when you've had a good one, like me and Emily here, you know, you're not going to find another one like that. Blimey! That was Black Dyke Street, that was. Do you mean this heap of festering rubbish and cat's leftovers is what we're supposed to be window cleaning today? Turn your flipping back and knock it down behind you, don't they? Yeah, watch the same hasn't happened to your house when you get back home. No, but it's a good street, there's. I had one house, you know, with a woman there, could go in and get refreshment, you know. <laughs> yeah. Something hot on a cold day, eh? They can't do this to me. They've done it, Stan. Come on. Wagons, though. But there's two houses still over from last time. Now, listen, Mavis. Mm. I want you to go next door and find out what they're up to. Oh, me? Why not? I mean, you're bursting no, just same as I am. But I can't just go in there and say, excuse me, but what sort of business are you opening? No, I'm sorry, Rita, I just don't do that sort of thing. Mm. Well, you want a good excuse, won't you? I know. Go and ask them would they like some tea. Now, that's a good excuse, isn't it? Well, yes, I suppose. Well, go on, then, and make sure you get full tail who they are, when they're opening, and whether that fellow that's doing all that banging's got a good set of muscles. Oh, come on. And I have just decided a pint should be provided to help incent him with a job. Why, it's not, I don't know why. As time goes by, Newton and Ridley taste it in the mouth. Better than that stuff. Hey, Tommy, I guess you're fan club. Hello, love. Uh, Loading up the street by me singing, were you? No, I was just singing. I don't blame you either. Hey, I tell you what, if my singing makes you feel like swooning, there's a bag of plaster behind you. Fall on that. <laughs> no, I've just come from next door. Oh, yeah? Uh, are you in charge? Well, if no, you're looking for the boss, it's me you want. Uh, oh, don't stop, lad. You might seize up. We're not open yet, love. Maybe later on today. Really? It's a joke, love. Oh, uh, <laughs> Well, I'm from next door. Oh, I am. Pleased to meet you. My name's Dawson, Joe Dawson. Can I ask you I have the pleasure of addressing? Mavis Fowler. I'm very pleased to meet you. Yeah, I've been meaning to pop in and introduce myself to whoever owned next door, but you've beaten me to it. Well, I hope we'll be good neighbours. Well, I, I don't actually own it. I just work there. Uh, Mrs. Fairclough, she's the manageress. Well, she's the boss's wife as well, really. She asked me to pop round. Is it the disturbance? Pardon? We can't help a bit of noise, you know. You can't make bricks without straw. Still, all I can promise you is we'll cut it as short as we can. For one thing, I want to get this place open as soon as possible. Well, I mean, we do hear you, of course, but that's not why I came round. We just wondered if you'd like a cup of tea. That's very nice. 
That is nice of you, love, but you needn't bother. These lads have had one tea break this morning, and the union won't let them have another. He means he won't. <laughs> Well, we just thought we'd offer, you know. Much appreciated. It's important having friendly neighbours, especially in business. In fact, I was thinking of nipping into your place for a bite of dinner. Oh. What exactly do you put on? Uh, well, it's nothing elaborate, just simple hot snacks and sandwiches. As well as all the rest. Newspapers, sweets, tobacco. It must be a little gold mine. Yes, but I only work there, unfortunately. Definitely. How can I ignore the girl next door? I love her more I than I can say. I've had enough bad days, are they? Hey, when you're ready, flour. It doesn't seem right, though, does it? Eating chips without fish, you know. Hey, Thank you, Morning, love. Yeah. Morning, love. Yeah. Oh, dear. What? Get those greasy fish and chips out of here. Oh, they're not greasy, Mrs. Walker, here. So I want the best I've had for a long time. Get them out of here at once. Oh, well, I'll finish, any old. I didn't know there was any law against him. It is the law of good manners. You do not walk into someone's house. I would remind you, this is my house, eating fish and chips out of a newspaper. Oh, I didn't like to ask for a plate. They asked me for some salt to go on the Mrs. Walker, but I told them where to get off. I'm surprised you didn't show them the door at once, and I'm surprised that you allow this sort of thing to go on. I haven't time to get a grip of a Mrs. Walker. I mean, what with coping on my own, and there being a bit of a rush on as well. I mean, I know you had a headache, but it did leave me on my own. It is hardly surprising that I have headaches. If you bring food in here again, I shall ask you to leave the premises. Consider yourself told off. You know what it is, don't you? It's because she sells pies in there. She's not, because we're not eating her food. Well, as you, I like these pies in here, you know. So do I. But you do need a change, don't you? Next time Annie Walker finds you eating chips in here, mate, you'll have to change your pub. Don't keep going on about songs they were singing. What business are they in? Well, I couldn't quite make it out. It's all very confused around there. Some of us are very confused around here. Didn't you ask? Well, couldn't, could I? Why not? Well, I just couldn't, I mean, not straight out like that. Do you mean to say you've been round there and found out absolutely nothing? Oh, no, no, no. The owner's name is called Joe Dawson. And here's me thinking it was Prince Michael of Kent. What's he like? Him? Oh, he's quite nice, really. Quite nice, really. Do you know, it's no use sending you on a mission. If I sent you for cow wheel, you'd come back with tripe. Well, we're not all gifted at pushing our nose into other people's business. Like me, you mean? Well, you said it. Anyway, if you want to know all about Mr Dawson, you'll soon get your chance, because he's coming near for his dinner. Good. Mm. Now we're getting some. Well, we'll see how you go on. Perhaps you won't get to know so much. Don't kid yourself. By the time he leaves here, I shall know what he does for his living, his weight in his stocking feet, and where he's going for his holiday. <laughs> No, I want two TV times. Two? One's for a lady in D ward and the other's for the TV room in the men's wing. <laughs> I wonder why you were getting so many magazines. You didn't realise there were people at the hospital. Well, not everyone has visitors, you see, and they're the ones who ask me to get things for them. Oh, it must be a nice feeling, Emily, knowing that you're helping people. Yes, I suppose so. Mm, it must be very rewarding work. Mm. I used to think so. I used to enjoy it very much. You mean you don't now? It's starting to get on top of me, rather. I don't know. I think it's seeing so much distress. It's every day, you see. Mm. It's not so bad when I could go home and talk to Ernest about it. That was a great help. But now Ernest isn't there, and I come home to an empty house, and I'm still carrying all the depression that's collected up during the day. Still, I shouldn't be bothering you with my troubles. How much do I owe you? It's £1.74, please. Yes, I thought so. I've got it all ready for you somewhere. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Here I am. Oh, like the man of my word, I am. Yes. Uh, the uh, cafe section's through here. Thank you. Oh, Rita, yeah. this is Mr. Dawson from next door. This is Mrs. Fairclough. Oh, nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. We were wondering who our new neighbour was. Well, uh, come and sit down. Thank you. I'd have called in sooner, only you know how it is in business. Never enough hours in the day and always something to see to. Ah, don't I know. <laughs> and if you turn your back on workmen, they'll find a way to do it all wrong. 
So I don't want to be too long away. Uh, just uh, quick bites, what I'm after. A ham sandwich will do me nicely. Yes, well, we've got ham or cheese and tomato. Ham will do nicely. Oh, Thanks okay. very much. And a cup of tea, please, love. <laughs> A uh, nice business you've got here. Very nice indeed. Yes, well, uh, my husband, Len, he built it up, but uh, I run it for him, mind you. <laughs> he's a very lucky chap, that's all I can say. I hope he knows when he's well off. Mm. By the way, I hope my workmen aren't making too much of a row for you. Oh, we can stand it. It's in a good cause. Actually, we're glad that you're opening up next door. We didn't like being next to that empty shop. Quite right. Mm. It doesn't help to bring any trade in, does no, it? No, it doesn't. Actually, um, Mavis was uh, wondering what you did for a living, but she was too shy to ask. Bakers. Dawson's Bread and Cakes, that's me. I see. So you're opening next door as a bakery? Oh, no, love, no. The bakery's in Armitage Street. Next door is just an outlet for the stuff. I've already got two others. This'll be the third. Oh, well, I can see we'll have to give you a bread a try, Mr. Dawson. It's good bread, though I say so myself. Oh, excuse me a second. This one. Now, this one. Ham sandwich. Now, I brought the mustard, because I know it's not everybody likes it. And a cup of tea. Ta. Uh, Mavis, just to put your mind at rest, Mr. Dawson's a baker. Oh, right. as if I'd been worked up about it, Rita. Nice ham sandwich, this love. Oh, thank you. Bread's not as good as mine, mind you. <laughs> By the way, do you happen to have a toilet? Uh, well, uh, no, uh, not actually for customers, but, uh, well, seeing as you're a neighbour, I'm sure Mavis won't mind you using her bathroom. She lives upstairs. It's not putting you to any trouble. No, no, it's quite all right. Right, well, now I've had my sandwich, eh? Yeah, give us a shout. There's a smashing pub round the corner, you know, just past this chair. Hello, we got no flaming money. Stop talking about flaming pubs, will you? Talk about something else. Such as glass windows, stained glass windows. Hey, I'm positive to a stained glass window. Stan. Oh. Who cleans church windows, eh? Who cleans church windows? I don't know. That is why. Why don't we clean them and make a few bob on the side? They're not house windows, you know. They're big. Exactly. Big windows, big money. Check. Check. Come on, let's go and see the Right, 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 I'm with you. Hey, it's all rushed, all rushed, I'm getting old. Uh, that'll be it. Anyway, quite a few people have been asking me why we don't have a street outing this year. Oh, have they? I mean, we're into August next, next well, tomorrow, and on the 28th is this late bank holiday, so I thought I'd sound out one or two people, you know, see if anyone's interested. Oh, count me out, Ken. I could do with a trip, but I don't want to go with this lot round here. When I go, I want to change. Well, you could go a lot further and fare worse. I mean, they're a bad lot round here. I'm not saying they are. Just when I go on holiday, I don't want to take them with me, that's all. Well, how about you, Mrs Sharples? I take it you're interested. <laughs> oh, thank you. People that go away from home on bank holiday, well, they're looking at, in my opinion. Sitting half the day in a traffic jam and then getting a square yard of sand to yourself if you're lucky. No, I'd sooner stop at home. Well, it's the only day that some people can get away. Oh, well, they can get away without me. Well, how about you, Len? Are you and Rita interested in a, a street bank holiday outing? No way, mate. I'll probably be working anyway. <laughs> I think I'll just forget the whole thing. Would you father you? Hi, there. Hi darling. What are you going to have? Uh, I'll have a lager, look, please. Can I have a lager, Betty, please? Right. Uh, how's Rita? Oh, so, so. Oh, you can do with a nice long holiday, love. Oh, I have no chance, have I? He took me away on honeymoon. Mind you, he couldn't get out of that. But since then, nothing. Perhaps he didn't enjoy himself. Well, he never complained at the time. Am I not talking about me as if I wasn't playing <laughs> If there's one thing annoys me about women, it's that. Ah, oh, Thank you, darling. Darling. <laughs> Are you going to sit down? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind taking the weight off your feet. You know, you could do with an early night. You've got a short memory when it suits you. I'm working tonight. Oh, how well, I forgot about that. Yeah, well, it was your idea I climbed the golden ladder to stardom. Mind you, some folks might say it's just because you're interested in paying off the debt that we've got, but I know you have my career interest at heart. Where is it you're singing again tonight? Tannery Club. And if the name doesn't ring a bell, it's because until a month ago, it was the Hyde Skin and Fat Work Social Club. <laughs> the glamour of showbiz. Get out, you know, you love it, you'll sing anywhere if there's an audience. You reckon? Mm. I'll tell you what does worry me, whether my voice will stand it. I have spent half the morning shouting to make myself heard. Shop next door's been done up. They aren't half making a racket over it. Hey, who's got it? Oh, it's a fella called Joe Dawson. He 
got a bakery and two other shops. This will be his third. Hey, that won't do us any harm, will it? Oh, he can come in cabin for a bit of lunch. Had a chat with him. He seems a nice enough fella, friendly, you know. Yeah, I wish I'd knew that place was being done up. We could have got the job. Well, it's too late now, isn't it? Oh, it might not be. We might need some plumbing doing. Hey, I think I'll go and have a word with him. Can't do any harm. And we need the money. That's why I'm singing at the Tannery Club, isn't it? Well, here we are, Vicar. This is the uh, gentleman I was telling you about. Stanley Ogden, window cleaner par excellence. How do? How do you do, Mr Ogden? Uh, like me, he was admiring your other window as we walked down the road. Oh, it is rather magnificent, isn't it? In spite of the protective wire. Hey. Ah, yeah. Uh, he was also saying how uplifting it was to find such a thing as one plods down life's weary path. When you stand? Oh, I was, yeah. 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 Uh, but we couldn't help noticing, Vicar, how uh, the other window and these windows were not exactly sparkling. In fact, we in the profession would classify them as positively grimy. Yes, yeah, quite true, I'm afraid. Particularly these three. The prevailing wind, you know, carries a lot of dust with it. Well, it's no good having a beautiful window if it can't be appreciated by the congregation. No, oh, they certainly need cleaning. Well, we are offering to clean them for you. Really? I accept your offer gladly. Right. Come on, Stan, let's get cracking. Why not? Uh, well, uh, it would suit me much better tomorrow. I, um, I, I have a wedding here this afternoon. Oh, that's all right, Vicar. Splendid. Tomorrow it is, then. Uh, uh, thank you again. Thank you very much. We're in the money. We're oh, in the money. Quentin! Quentin! <laughs> Oh, Mr. Gower, do you know I've had rather a heartwarming experience? Two very ordinary working chaps, but they've volunteered to clean those three dirty windows of ours. Now, I call that real Christian charity, don't you? I don't want any space wasted, Tommy. No, I don't. Uh, but don't forget, down this end, we'll want to get in and out with bread trays, so you'll need to leave enough room to get past. Oh, I've got you. Good afternoon, Mr. Dawson. Ah, that's right. Oh, my name is Len Fairclough. I own the cabin next door. Oh, yes, I met your good lady earlier on. Very nice to meet you, Mr. Fairclough. Aye, ah, she said that you were moving in here. I just thought I'd come in and say hello. Very nice of you. And while I'm here, I might as well ask you if you're already fixed up for your conversion job. I've got a building and plumbing firm as well as the cabin, you see. Oh, I see. You wear two hats, then. Well, she looks after that pretty well. We've done a good few conversion jobs. We do good work. So I wondered if you weren't already fixed up. Oh, I am, I'm afraid. It's all in hand now. Ah, well, I was afraid you might be. Still, there was no harm in mentioning it, was there? As a matter of fact, I'm very glad that somebody's moving into this place. It's not in a bad position. I reckon it should do all right when it's fixed up. It should do us a bit of good and all. It's better than being next to an empty shop, mm. isn't it? Anyway, like I said, good to meet you. And you, Mr. Fairclough. Thank you. Hello. down. Doesn't he know this? Know what? This place is going to be a cafe. It doesn't look as though he does, does it? And while he doesn't know, Tommy, it's not hurting him. So make sure you keep your mouth shut. All right. We return to Weatherfield at 9 o'clock tomorrow when the cabin receives a mysterious visit from the health inspector. Next tonight here on Granada Plus, it's the comedians.